What's that? Let me do this. ready. All right, let's call this meeting of CPDC to order. Um, do we want to take things in order, or is there um, some preference? That so I would start by reading the continuance for 107 Main Street, which there's an email. Should be right under your agenda? Oh, on top. Okay, um, so the first item on our agenda is um, a major modification um, to approve site plan at 107 Main Street, uh, Fusilli's Restaurant. Um, they have requested to continue that, so we won't be um, discussing that today. Uh, and um, their request is to be on the uh, the next our next meeting on August twelfth. Mm -hmm. Is there time? Okay. Um, so. So. Move that the CPDC continue the public hearing for the major modification to the approved site plan at 107 Main Street Facilities Restaurant until August 12th at 7.45 p.m. Right. Second. All those in favor? Vote. Aye. <laughs> and then we have two ANRs and one um, enforcement. Should we do the to take those now? Yeah. All right. So there's a lot of signing in your near future. Um. So let's take here. We have this um, A and R plan or land at IHG of IHG Investment Trust at 1503 and 1505 Main Street. Do you all have something really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. We'll it's stack. So we have a, an email here. So this is a lot um, that is Let's see the original size. Acres plus twenty five eight thirty four. So nine and four. Approximately. There are two existing lots, and they're configuring the lot lines to create two new lots, but there is a net of zero lots. So, oh, okay, so they're adjusting, okay. so the they're adjustment to the lot lines. Right. Same, same frontage. It does not impact frontage. All right. Right. All right. How does it matter? And essentially, it's a, a adjustment of the lot line between the two, those two lots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A memo from town engineer saying that it um, qualifies for 
approval not required. <coughs> so is there something that we need to do? Uh, vote to endorse it and then sign it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a hypothetical question? Uh, question two. Mm -hmm. If per se somebody were to come back later and attempt to build a subdivision out of the new lot B, how would that work since those lots may straddle two zoning districts? What would be the requirement for the lot size being that they're also S40 and S20? So um, that's not such an unusual circumstance, actually. And what we would do is we would look at the layout proposed for the subdivision. And the new lots proposed in one district would have to meet those requirements. And new lots proposed in the other would have to meet those requirements. <laughs> so it's possible that one standards. of two lots could require 20000 and the other one could require 40000 Yeah. Not including the amount of land required for the subdivision road. Right. That's right. Okay. The, uh, the angle of this lot line for lot A, I guess along Main Street, there's a rule for how, what angle that can be, right? It's not supposed to be less than 45 degrees. Is that the only requirement? I thought that it also had to, I also thought it couldn't cut the lot, pinch the lot. So I will just note that endorsement of this plan is not, um, you're not saying that one way or the other that it not, um, allowing it because it doesn't impact frontage. Um, there should be a statement on the plan that actually says that. But by the same token, if it were to create a new lot that didn't do zoning, we wouldn't be able to subdivide it or we wouldn't be able to endorse it. You can endorse the plan. It, 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 this is about frontage on an adequacy of the way. It doesn't mean that your, your endorsement isn't saying they can go get a building permit. Correct. Right. So it's to their benefit to like have their lots comply with zoning, mm -hmm. but your endorsement is not an endorsement that it complies with zoning. Well, the lots cannot be more non-conforming than they currently are. Correct. <laughs> if they are, they should receive a special permit from the zoning board of appeals. You're, that's not part of your jurisdiction with approval not required plans. Okay. Purely, it's purely just the frontage and whether the frontage is on a right of way that's adequate. That's correct. That's okay. That's all it is. And so this plan doesn't impact frontage at all. So right. technically, you just close your eyes and sign it. Okay. But but <laughs> we continued on the next day. And <laughs> right. <laughs> Not that questions aren't. No, questions are great. One of those notes great. for next time. Yeah. Right. We're in about three minutes. Yeah. Let me go. Okay. Can we do? Probably because it sees the. Did you log off the Wi Fi? No. Is that what we yeah. move that the CPC endorse the approval not required plan uh, submitted by the ISG Investment Trust at 1503 and 1505 Main Street, Reading, Mass. Second. All those in favor? Yeah, so the plans are on that little side table. How many signatures do we need? Just three? Um, we just need three, yeah. Just thinking if we're going to be signing a lot of documents, yeah. just speed it along. The chair and then two others and just keep rotating it. Mm -hmm. I believe Main Street is the one on top on the left. All right, Main and Street. then the next one um, is. 355, 361 Franklin Street. Mm -hmm. And y'all can ask questions as I sign. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
the oven. Which one's my cake? Yeah. And there's a memo about that as well, which wasn't uploaded to Google Drive because I just, well, I uploaded it today. Any engineering memos on any of the signals? Yeah, I didn't see anything on Austin Price. We didn't get one, so we didn't get one, but we didn't get one. Should we dismiss it? Yeah. In the A&Rs, I write, but I do consult with them, usually. <laughs> there, there are two there are two mylars for the for each A and R. I should only sign those which we just approved, correct? Oh, yeah, you can take one. Okay, I have a question, I guess. Let's see, maybe it's misunderstand this. But, um, the original plan from 2007, the original proposed subdivision plan. Andrew, can you bring up this yeah, other one? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Can you do it too? Sure. Here, the last one. Right. Yeah. So this is the prior. Yeah. 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 I, I can't do math. But, so that says that those two lots are 8850, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the line between them is completely straight. Mm -hmm. So then when you go to the proposed plan they want to do now, there's a, a kink in the line mm -hmm. top. Mm -hmm. yep. The lots are still the same size. The actual kink in the line runs down a portion of the center as well. It might be hard to see on the small version of the plan. You're saying that the net from the off line, you're saying that it's off center? I'm saying that, yeah, it's a little bit off center. So that might have something to do with like that area. Um, Nick, you might be looking at the right one. Yeah, can you see it's slightly off? There's like a little space in between. So I'm assuming that's where the... Existing barn. Watching your enemies. <laughs> 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 Thank you, and then uh, I'll record it and I'll get to the recording. Please do. Great, and make sure to leave us one it's of the mylar. Only one mylar. It's only one mylar there? Yeah. Um, no, there's two. There's two there, I think. Thank you. <laughs> so we're signing these because lots are no less <coughs> That's, a, that's immaterial to so this. 
my bitch did not change. The frontage does not change. Not Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Right. These are, there are still two non-conforming lots here. Is that correct that if they were to take 4,000 square feet from one and add it to the other, so you'd still end up with two lots, but one was now 4,000 where it was 8,000, that would be approved? That would be not part of the consideration? It's not part of the consideration here. It might impact something down the road. It might impact the building permit. It might impact the status of the non-conforming lot. I mean, there's other things at uh, play. It seems like we're just creating more problems for CBA, right? We can't not endorse the plan. That's so. I mean, the applicant is the one who would have to go to CBA to rectify any infectious invalidity or any anything that. Yeah. That happens with this. But you see what happens, right? Is that it becomes more non conforming. Then they go cry to ZBA that it's non conforming and they ask for a variant so they can add on to it because it's non conforming. But they created it and ZBA grants it anyways. They're already non conforming. Yeah, I, I, see, I hear what I you're saying. Yes. Right. I'm just not helping. I just thought one of the standard rules was you can never create a more non conforming lot. That's what I thought. And if, if really, if we have no right to not endorse it, we don't. then why does it have to come here at all? a and is a strange... 40A. It's a strange... No, but what? Yeah. <laughs> There's been a, really a lot of case law on, yes, on boards that have refused to sign, and then, yeah. um, and then really, I think that the latest is then it, it actually doesn't matter. It just creates a whole legal <laughs> it's problem. Right. But exactly. in the end, they still oh, we've they done still it get it because we still have to, we still throw it back to the ZBA, which is a legal problem. We're still dealing with it, regardless. Right, but we're not incurring legal costs no, for right. ourselves. More legal That's costs. right. Yeah. There's a there's a thing called the A and R handbook, which goes through like yeah. many different scenarios and cites a lot of cases, and it's quite interesting if you're into this kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Job. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it is, and I think I believe it's part of the zoning reform that's before the House and Senate. That a, a new look at the A and R process because mm -hmm. it's a little strange. Okay. So. So with that. So <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> just for your information, if I recall correctly. Back in 2007, I want to say that these two houses were on a single lot, and they then subdivided into two even lots. I believe you are correct, but the current property owner is here. Maybe you could that. Actually, the, that plan was provided. Yeah. It was, it was endorsed as an ANR under... Um, A1L. A1L, right. Um, is a provision of subdivision control law that says that if you have two buildings that exist on one lot that predate the adoption of subdivision control law, they can be separated and put on their own lots, even if the lots are non-conforming. So that's... Can I ask what thinking the line does for you? Now we don't have to go to the Board of Appeals. Both houses will be non-conforming. They will meet the setbacks of 15 feet on the and the houses will not be a trail of looking thing. One of them wouldn't have been real skinny without moving that over. So now we'll have two symmetrical houses for the neighborhood. So. These are uh, well, but grandfather yeah. lots. Now yes. four, 14 feet become 14.7 without being non conforming. Yeah, we're ripping these houses down, sir. Houses uh, and down. Yeah. So, okay. And the new homes. I'm sorry, I didn't correct myself. I didn't. One of them I was like, because we have a before and after that show the exact same placement. Yeah, I don't even remember what year the barn fell down in a snowstorm like back in 2007. Seven years ago, and uh, Mr. Redmond called me up. I ran down and brought one of my excavators there and we tore it down because it was a public safety issue. So. Okay. Okay. That's a, that's that make now everything makes sense. That's a tr traditional <laughs> way to resolve a non-conformance. 
George, you wiggle out line over. It's not the house I want, but it will be a good house. But yeah. Okay. Without going to the Board of Appeals and asking for variances. Okay. Move that the CPDC uh, endorse the uh, approval not required plan submitted by JDB Realty Trust for 355 and 351 Franklin Street, Reading, Mass. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? Would you oppose? I abstain. Speak of the vote. <laughs> you can't endorse it. Not that voted on the first one. Okay. All right. Also, I'm not on the sign. Let me get up. Do we have time to do the subdivision endorsement? Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, it's for 116 West Street for the subdivision. Um, Created one net new lot. Um, there were some waivers granted from um, design standards for the road, as you might remember. Um, they have complied with what we've asked for prior to endorsement. So here they are, with the plan to be endorsed. Do we have anything to look at, right? Yeah. Do we have any huge plans, plans if you would like ah. them? I'll bring it up. Did you, do we have another? I don't know if we have another version. We should get one. If we don't have one. I think I have it, but I don't think I put it in the folder. It was on the drive. It was on the drive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for from the drive? The 116 West. <laughs> Legal notice from March 11th? No. no. no just to bring up the plans so that we oh, right. endorsed the plans for endorsement. The plans for endorsement are really just notes to clarify, I believe, no street lighting and that no variances were granted on the lot. And then they added the zoning table as well. Um, just things like that that we asked for on the final set. And sometimes we also ask for engineering has some like small changes, and they're in the decision that we look at when we have to approve the subdivision. Mm -hmm. Engineering signed off on the frame. For 116 West Street, is there an issue? No, the question is about whether it was uh, done, right? So this isn't a, this isn't a certificate of completion. This is just endorsement. So they have, in theory, haven't done anything. Okay. Okay. Is that use HDMI or VGA for connection? Uh, it's okay. It's a hey. dock. It's, my hands. it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. We're doing this guy. I need funding. Um, you need to vote on the endorsement, and it will be three. Three is required. Yeah, we have three. Yeah. But, yeah. So Am I allowed to set? Yep. Okay, okay. I, sorry, I was talking about 116 last oh, year. We started yet. talking about that when you walked away. <laughs> right. so, sorry. <laughs> it's jumping in. Um, so, yeah, you can grab one of the mylars. Thank you very much for your message, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you. Good luck with the new houses. I have one question on the 116. Do they include, or I guess, what would be the next step on? Um, I think that they were going to do some like, like a tree or like landscape plan, something along those lines. Because they started, uh, they basically clear cut already last week that plot. Yeah, the decision. There's a landscape plan included in that set. At least it showed. Uh, a string of arbor arbor yeah, along yeah. the perimeter on the yeah, um, I guess west and south mm -hmm. sides. Yeah, no, I, I had that mm -hmm. original one. I thought the during some of the meetings there was a discussion about a more. But I remember the owner saying that he hadn't gone done a full plan yet. 
So I was just curious when that was going to come out. We're going to get the plan decision so we can try to help answer the question. Um, so I'm sorry, I missed the discussion. Yes, on yeah, the that. last page of the I was, I was just asking if a engineer had signed off on the drainage design proposed. But again, as with the landscaping as well, this is sort of the definitive subdivision plan, but it's not the final landscaping plan. Well, is it? I'm so. Um, was there a question about the drainage design? Because that should have been signed off on before you approved the subdivision. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Actually, it's probably in the minutes. Yeah. When was this approved? Was it approved in March or this April? Is, this is March. Mm -hmm. But this is not finished. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. Andrew's grabbing the file, too, so we have that. Is anyone here on behalf of 116 West Street? Like on behalf of the applicant. Okay. File if you want. He's grabbing it. Thanks to him. How did you do that? I already downloaded the Google Drive to my hard drive. Oh, well, there you go. This is just. This is some IT manager. everything you need. I took it from your drive. There, I got it. I got it. Feel free to unclip it or whatever. I just I brought it along because I had it. Do you remember what the specific issue was, Nick? There were some questions about, uh, at least during the discussion, there were questions about the depth of the skull tanks. Because it might have also been included. Like, we do have conditions that they meet engineering requirements at different stages of yeah, it's the in, process. Yeah, that kind of language is just trying to bring it up. There's been an outstanding issue where we said they'll, they'll work with the town engineer. So prior to endorsement is what we're looking at. Right now. There's prior to the issuance of the building permit. Okay. So we do have a prior to plan endorsement condition about engineering comments. The applicant shall coordinate with the town engineer to resolve any necessary outstanding comments listed in the memo dated April 1st, 2019. Um, and Andrew checked with Ryan and he signed off on, it, on endorsement. Um, we can look into it further for you if you okay. As long as, uh, I guess, they're bound to put in a system that complies when they finally do their, their design. Right. Should be. Let me check one more time. More than one more time, time yeah. Multiple areas. And then regarding landscaping. Yeah, so what the landscaping. And for landscaping, again, you know, they're shoving a certain amount of landscaping, but as always is the case, they'll come back finally and say, well, these are going to be this plant species and this is going to be that plant species. This was just approved in May. That just shows intent. The intent right. is to create a border along the edge, but then as they come up with the landscape design, they pick plants specifically.
it doesn't have specific plants. No, it just shows the intent is to create a border. Oh, sorry, I said over it. Yep. Yep. We do. Those are for trees in the right of way. Yeah. Just in the right of way. Yeah. Sorry, can you restate what your question was? Uh, specifically, it's just do we have a defined landscape plan right now? Last week, they clear cut that entire lot. So I'm kind of sitting there like, what are you going to put back in? How is that going to affect my, yeah, I mean, like, these are all questions we kind of brought up. Privacy, you know, what are we put in three foot abrovites? That's really not acceptable. Or I don't think that that's really working with the neighbors. I think we should have a discussion maybe about kind of what's going back in there to try to create that. Well, um, that's the plan. Boundary, so to speak. Yeah, abrovite, I don't know what size they are. Right, it's like point five, <laughs> five or six. Right, it's like, yeah, right there. Okay. So it looks like we have. I'm, yeah, I'm just asking, like, kind of, like, where, where's, like, the landscaping plan and kind of, like, what, what the next step is, because obviously, like, it's kind of happening. Like I said, there was a crane back there for three days last week ripping out trees. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on in my backyard. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so we do have a plan, the site and utility plan that's up on the screen that shows what some of the proposed landscaping is going to be. Okay. Are you Dan Ryan? Yeah. Okay, I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. We can chat more offline about this. If anyone else is interested to know more details about what's proposed, I can share the plans um, from my office. Okay. Um, but also to his note, and I, I can't see the plan from there. I mean, I can read it. Right? Didn't they had? I think I see an area where they noted that um, they weren't going to disturb. Right, I think right. That clouded, clouded that area clouded area is the disturbed area. Yeah, and so if there, if the, right, there's a problem there if they disturbed the area outside of mm -hmm. the, right. So, right. Um, check so right, which happens. <laughs> it's been known to happen. So I'm sorry, um, Julie. I'm not sure what's the action for the definitive subdivision plan endorsement. Do we have a plan that we're oh, endorsing? Yes, and it's on the back table back there. All right. Um, so you just need to take a vote and then. Oh, on the very back the table. Very back oh, piece. okay. I was like, I didn't see another plan back yeah. there. Yeah, we had just separated them. All right. Um, and there are two sets, and there are many um, sheets on each set. A decent eight number of sheets. sheets. Yeah, eight I sheets. Think, yeah. yeah. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so this is an endorsement or approval? Endorsement. 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 Okay. Um, move that the CPDC endorse the Definitive subdivision plan for 116 West Street is presented. Assessors map 10, lot 155. Second. All those in favor? Um, yes, the way the read begins. Yeah, right. <laughs> Why are the associate number? <laughs> 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 Sorry. No, it's fine. Oh, okay. Um, can we sign those later? Mm -hmm. I, maybe while we're talking um, about minutes or about minutes or, or awesome yeah, okay. minutes yeah. Or, or zoning. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah, so, Keep much too long. Keep things yes. moving. <laughs> yep. All right. Um,
Next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing for 101 Willow Street, Austin Prep. Chris Latham for Austin Prep. In attendance tonight on behalf of Austin Prep is also Dr. James Hickey, uh, Mr. John Weber, Mr. Jonathan Pollard, uh, Chris Huntress, and uh, Engineer uh, John Barrows. Uh, since the first CPDC hearing uh, on June 10th, Austin Prep has submitted its stormwater report and its checklist and has met with the town engineer. Uh, last week in these regards. Likewise, in consideration of the CPDs and the public's comments um, at the first meeting, um, we made some revisions to the plans and we've also provided some alternative data for the board's consideration. So with that being said, I'll turn the show over to uh, Chris Hunter. Thanks, Chris. As I said, my name is Chris Hunter. I'm with Hunter Associates for Landscape Architects and Planners. This thing, uh, Austin Prep, with their plan. Um, since our last meeting, we've done a number of things um, at your request. We reviewed the um, sports light. Uh, we, we looked both at the uh, zero grid out to the property lines, and we looked at the height issue. Uh, we've submitted the photometrics to you. I hope that you've had a chance to review those. Um, what I can tell you uh, in quick summary would be with the existing design, with the original design, we were able to achieve zero foot candles at the property line, which was the original design at town. We asked the engineers to look at ways to lower the pole heights, and they did that. And we submitted a revised design that lowered in the baseball field for the poles A1, B1, B2, and C1 from 90 feet to 80 feet, and reduced all the tennis court uh, pole heights from 50 feet to, to 40 feet. I'm sorry, not, uh, not all. That's right. From uh, 50 feet to 40 feet was T1, 2, 3, and 4. And reduced from 53 feet to 43 feet was T5, 6, 7, and 8. And so those all came down in 10 feet. The, um, the result of lowering pole heights did increase spill and glare and does show foot candles that exceed the proper, we're exceeding zero, zero on the property lines by coming down. The reason that that happens is as you bring the pole heights down, we angle the fixtures up so they can cover the same area within the field, which is why they were originally designed higher so they could be more direct uh, down. Uh, so our recommendation would be that we leave them at the at the original heights and, and uh, try and respect the, the property boundaries, but I'm certainly open to discussion from the board. The, uh, some of the other items that uh, you asked us to review included a, um, a fence or some of the neighbors had expressed concerns about privacy and access into the site. So we added, Andrew, could you, um, I bother you to get me to sheet L1 in the land set. Come over here, maybe it would be easier. Yeah. Um, we added a six foot um, solid board fence that starts here at the tennis courts and extends all the way down to this location here against the MBTA railroad right away. That detail is shown as detail eight on um, sheet L5. The other fence we added starts right here um, along the edge of the, uh, the baseball field continues up towards the tennis courts and then turns head left and down. Andrew, can I get you to scroll over to the end of the tennis courts mm -hmm. so I can see all of them? And terminates here at the end of the tennis courts. That would be, again, a six-foot solid board privacy fence. Uh, and as I mentioned to Andrew, Andrew uh, and I met last week along with John Barrows, our civil, and Ryan, your uh, town engineer. Review drainage plans, we also took a quick look at some of these things. Um, the trees within um, those areas, particularly uh, against the MBTA, right away, uh, although it's it's maturely forested, it's pretty open in there. So our intention would be to not cut trees to put these uh, fences up, but just jog the trees lightly as we go through that area. We're willing to stake that out and have the board review it. Location, make sure that we um, only do minimal tree clearing, if any, to be able to get that fence in. The other thing we looked at um, in the same location I just talked about, the tennis court fence, was the tennis court wall. There's a wall on the uh, bottom side of the tennis courts um, that cuts into the grade. Originally it was 10 feet. 
It's now six and a half feet. We've made that change by adjusting some of the grades within the tennis court and getting the tennis court picking one side up and super elevating across the other side. Picked up about a foot and a half and we dropped the grade at the top of the wall and created a, um, a small swale at the back side of the wall and then sloped up to the trees. It does require a little bit more um, clearing, but it reduced the height of that wall. Uh, which some of the neighbors had, has had concerns about. We also changed the detail of that wall from a smaller module block wall to a gravity wall system, which doesn't require tiebacks into the slope. It'll just hold itself from its own uh, from its own mass. Uh, so those details are again uh, included there. The um, the final thing that you had asked for was a review of the sound system. And we provided a plan, uh, albeit Andrew late today, or you do have it, excellent. Um, it really shows what we talked about last time. If I can get you to zoom right in on that, mm -hmm. yeah, if possible. <coughs> We've done it with a bit of a key here, and it's all focused around the, the baseball grandstands and infield. Uh, the letter A designates the press box. That's the location where the control will be. So all the speaker control, whoever's running the system, will be will be in that uh, press box area. Um, B and C are the two sports light poles that are uh, on the infield. Those will have each have uh, two pairs of speakers mounted 35 feet up. Uh, those speakers will be controlled in pairs, meaning not both speakers on C could be turned on and off, but one on B and one on C would be paired together. Uh, in pairs so that you could turn on either two, one on each pole, or four, two on each pole. Uh, they would all be pointed away from the neighbors and towards the field. The other two speakers would be E and F that you see right in front of it. It's a little harder to see, but right in front of the, the press box there. And those are single speakers, smaller speakers that are located in the uh, under the eave of the press box, and those are intended to provide sound for those uh, um, who are watching the game. So uh, this system provides you could turn off entirely the speakers on the light poles, being C and B, and only play into uh, the speakers on the grandstands, being E and F. You can turn the whole thing on, or you can turn on uh, parts of the, the speaker system on C and B as well. And finally, the last bit of control um, is control where you see D, which is in the third base dugout. Uh, which is a speaker jack control that would allow somebody to be able to control it um, from the dugout if they weren't using the, uh, the press box. Those are the um, overview of some of the major changes we made. The other thing that I wanted to try and present tonight, which I would hand over to John Barrows, would be a review of our um, grading and stormwater design. Um, John had prepared a uh, stormwater report. Uh, we met with Ryan uh, and again with Andrew to review that last Monday. Um, and Ryan uh, had some initial uh, very positive feedback for us, but um, I'm not sure he was able to get anything out this evening. Was he Andrew? Andrew, have we seen anything no, from Ryan? Did not was able to, was not able to provide a memo. He didn't promise anything being the, the holiday weekend, so that's understandable. Any questions on any of the other items before I turn it over to John for stormwater? I have a question about the photometrics. I was trying to make sense of how it was spilling over. Is it spilling over from the lights on the opposite side yes. of the field? Yes. So what really is 0.8 foot candles? 0.8 foot candles, um, as a reference, um, one foot candle is what's required by building code when you exit a facility in the evening. So if you're exiting a, an entrance, you have to have a minimum of one foot candles. Typically in most parking lots, you're going to be five to seven foot candles minimum at kind of breast height, uh, which is where you want, where you're taking your readings. Um, so one foot candle, although not bright, it does shed some light. I'm just wondering if, you know, this is theoretical, of course, right? It doesn't account for, does it account for that fence that you put on the It doesn't account for anything vertical. So trees and fences, no, would not be accounted for. And does it account for the grade that's happening on the, on the, Part where we're getting some of these hot spots? It does. Yep. It does. Yeah, they model the terrain, but they don't put in anything that sits above the terrain structures. Yeah, so well, I guess what I'm wondering is whether it's worth accepting that there's this sort of minimum spillover here of, you know, 0.8 in the corners, really. Uh, but losing 10, what is it, 10 feet of height on the. You only added one one light fixture, one luminaire on one pole and you subtracted two on another pole. I don't know how the total comes out the same, but it shouldn't. 
but you know what I mean? Like it was, there was a minimal amount of change in what was being done other than the angle and it's dropping the height. Really, it's all about the angling. And so does it still work for the players? It does. It does. So what we're trying to achieve is, you know, the target that we give the, when we do the fog metrics is to achieve 50 foot candles throughout the playing surface on an average in that, in that in both scenarios, but also respecting the, the abutting property lines and trying to get to a zero zero grid. Yeah, because well, that's what our coach is. And so what I'm trying to get at is accepting this theoretical spillover, which is nominal. This is this is probably what, 35 or 40 right here on my hand, yeah. right in this, I'd say maybe 0.8 foot candles, but losing all that height on those luminaries is that is that really worth it? Because I think. If they're higher, you'll see them from further away, regardless of whether they're actually casting, casting you know, this light, yeah. this theoretical light again across the property line, and then not accounting for foliage and stuff like that. Because it's a pretty significant drop you've made in the height of the holes. Right, and ten feet, ten feet on the 90s and ten feet on the 50s is, I think, pretty noticeable. So I'd be willing to accept the lower holes and this theoretical spillover. I guess if we're allowed to. I, I guess that's my question is, are we allowed to? I mean, where, what's the... Hmm. Are you a amendment? Are you talking, what are you talking about? No, I didn't think about that. Yeah. That's easier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. All the gas stations in town are supposed to be zero at the lot line, right? Oh, we're talking about the lot lines. Um, drive by it at night. What? <laughs> yet the building code requires one foot candle at an exit drive. An exit doorway. And an exit doorway. Okay, so that's. That was just an example. I'm just trying to get a sense for how bright that yeah. is. Yeah. How bright is point eight? Um. I don't know, but I, I'm thinking that this might not be approved tonight, so there might be time for us to ask that question. Mm -hmm. If I, I guess the question is where specifically in zoning, um, how is that articulated? Yeah, right. Is it? I'm pretty sure it is. I can't read this. Is that um, legible? But. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I think it's point .8 at, this, at the one corner down here, but it looks like it's less as you come up. And not accounting for the fence. There were some that were a little bit higher. I think there were some that were as high as two when you zoom in on that to go account. But what, I guess where are you looking at? I mean, I kept focusing over here. Are you yeah. presuming that that line, that blue line, is a lot line? Yes. The because they're very different on the two plans. Very different. So that's why I stopped squinting and oh, yeah. trying to figure oh, this out yeah. because they don't I that doesn't make they, sense. They took the, uh, back line. Uh, the other one. Does that make sense? Like, so it's a good, good point I didn't notice that. Super they, far the, away from the revised one. It looks one like they're, they're scaled. They took the right setback line. Oh. And, uh, yeah. and not the property line. Oh, so that's a setback line. It's the setback line. So you're right. You're much closer to zero, zero when you offset that by 30 feet. I can have that exhibit corrected. So that you yeah. Did you hear what we were saying? Yeah, I did. Okay. That's good too. I mean, if we're not going to approve, finish this tonight, that gives them a chance. Mm -hmm. If the lighting works. I don't know. Yeah, which which yeah. diagram is correct? A or B? Uh, a is correct uh, with the property line. B shows what they setback. show as a as a uh, property line here is actually the setback line. Okay. So it's, yeah, 30, so it's feet, actually it's better. 30 feet inboard of the, the property. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My opinion is that if the lighting is safe for the players okay. at the lower height, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'd rather have the lower height and some mm -hmm. the, you know, nominal color, which is probably mm -hmm. not by the fence and the foliage and the elevation changing. Where were, where were the point eights mostly occurring? I think that the very point right here is point eight. 
Yeah. It's like zero. Uh -huh. We can print it out at large. It's formatted at this size when we get it from them. It's easier to see on screen. Um, you zoom in on it. You can yeah. see yeah, what that is looking at. When you go back out that 30 feet, you're going to be much closer to zero. zero. Yeah. 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 On the lower yeah. Yeah. Zero, yeah. That makes it even better. I don't know where lighting is in the box. Other questions? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I have a question. So, um, on the cross section of the um, of the grandstand. Mm -hmm. Showing that the uh, I'm just flipping up one to make sure I have this right. Um, it shows the top um, of the finish grade at uh, 100 elevation, which I assume I guess this is. I want to make sure that that's not actually one. That's that was a. That's from the grandstand manufacturer with an okay. assumed elevation. All right. <laughs> so it's a le it, it basically what I took from this is it's a it's eleven feet, um, eleven six or something, eleven feet above elevation. The elevation is what it shows, basically pretty close to field elevation. All right. Um, the reason why I was thinking about that was right. That's that's how high the railroad tracks are about. I think six feet, seven feet, ish right. um, above uh, above um, field elevation. With the fence, um, that will be eight feet. So your your the fence will cover that. That's is six feet. Yeah, I'm sorry, six feet. Yep. Um, so the fence will cover that um, will that area. How much of the structure? So. Mm -hmm. Other questions before we move on to drainage? Without right. okay. further ado, uh, John Barrows with Marchandas and Associates is our civil and we'll take you through. Good evening. Uh, again, my name is John Barrows. I'm a professional engineer from uh, Marchanda and Associates uh, over in Stone. Um, I guess if we could maybe put the um, drainage and grading and drainage plan up. So, so since we're under uh, under site plan review and we're going to be required to file a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission. Um, we are obliged to meet uh, DEP's stormwater st uh, management standards. And to show how we're meeting the applicable standards, so we've put together a stormwater report. Uh, on this particular site, because of the, the you know final product and or land use, uh, there's two main standards that, that we really need to um, uh, you know, we had to come up with a design to, to meet the standard. Um, the two standards um, are uh, peak weight attenuation and uh, groundwater recharge. Those are the ones that are really applicable in this, this case uh, uh, because, you know, we're dealing with a, um, a pavement uh, for tennis courts and walking paths, but no real uh, driving roadways, as well as, you know, a natural grass field and, and, and turf, uh, synthetic turf. Um, so, uh, with uh, under peak rate of attenuation, uh, we have presently we've got three areas where uh, stormwater generally runs off. We've got. Um, uh, might help you just move up a little bit on this. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. So we've got you know three main areas. We've got an area that runs off um, to the, to the uh, I guess on this would be the west. Um, towards uh, a property that's actually owned by the town, uh, the municipal of land of land, um, this end of the site. So a portion of the site that runs off that way, we've got a portion of the site that runs towards the wetland area that's downstream of the access causeway that exists there today, and then uh, an area that runs off um, uh, upstream of the causeway which is, um, as you know, the Abidjan River that flows through there in a large wetland area that uh, borders that. Um, to meet uh, the, um, 
uh, heat rate attenuation to make sure that we mitigate and don't have any more uh, storm water running off uh, than exists today. Uh, we have three main uh, uh, storm water management systems. Um, the, the majority of the pavement here, which is about 1.5 acres of new impervious, if that's the domain created. Um, majority of that will run towards, uh, run off of the pavement to a kind of swale with uh, infiltration trench and um, dry wells. Um, that will take care of the smaller storm events and, uh, you know, basically meets the recharge requirement for that area. Um, the larger storm events will run into an infiltration basin um, that will be located at the end of the uh, uh, tennis courts. Um, there is an emergency, emergency spillway that if for some reason it ever got more than a 100 year event that would run off that way. Um, that's not going to be the case because uh, there's just not that much storm water being generated even though it's getting up there. It's still a relatively small area. Um, the other um, area uh, of the site, uh, we have a, a smaller portion of uh, impervious service for the walkways um, and the field, of course which really doesn't generate a whole lot of runoff. These, these synthetic fields are very efficient because they have a fresh uh, stone base, uh, gravel base, uh, with uh, drainage panels that run through it. But nevertheless, we, we have a, a, an even larger area of fresh stone and infiltration bed. Uh, so anything that, ran, that you know, runs down to that uh, would uh, be absorbed in that area. Uh, for the most part, that's going to take the majority of the field and the walkways. We also have a, uh, there's a dry well here uh, that has a connection to that system. Uh, and for the very large events, uh, you know, basically it's an emergency overflow. Um, if it reached capacity for some reason, um, it would run off uh, to a, uh, a, a, a structure with uh, some earth wrap on the end. But uh, again, the, the, because we have so much going on with the um, uh, the, the bed of this uh, field and the infiltration bit, we really don't anticipate any water coming out of it at all. Um, the, the soils underneath in this area um, are very, very good. They're all um, gravels and sands. Um, so anything that falls uh, through the, the synthetic turf will yeah. more than likely get absorbed by that and infiltrate through the before the uh, system and made its way into this infiltration bed. And we take we took no credit for the good soils in the in the uh, gravel bed that were uh, that, that are you know getting put in uh, for the field. Uh, the other portion, uh, the other part of the site uh, that's running off upstream of uh, the causeway, uh, which is uh, is basically this area of the uh, a new a natural grass practice field. Uh, we have that all down to a, a rain garden, a uh, rain garden, which is actually quite large. Um, and again, it, we don't have a, a lot of runoff with these really good soils. This this is uh, going to you know capture uh, all the storm water that's generated here. Um, all of these these three main components, they're all infiltration based uh, BMPs, uh, so uh, they are designed to infiltrate the storm water. So uh, you can see in the report. Um, we are well above what uh, DEP, put, DEP puts down for a criteria requirement for uh, infiltration. Um, yeah, I, I think the numbers were required with that amount of pavement. It's about 3,000 uh, cubic feet of, of recharge, and we were creating about 23,000 uh, volume capacity um, that can be taken with uh, and the different components of the system. So those are the, the, you know, that's the, the main uh, design, um, you know, I, I think that pretty much is it for this project. It's pretty straightforward. Um, if you have any specific questions about the design, I'd be happy to answer them. Well, on the uh, portion that abuts the, uh, the uh, railroad right away, is there uh, transitional area conditions or something that? Well, that that there's a portion of that basically uh, it's kind of the center of the tracks I guess it's it, you know it's the high point that runs on to this this property so um, as I mentioned up by the um, 
these tr um, tennis courts, there is going to be a low point in the swale that's going to have some infiltration trenches and okay. dry wells uh, through there. The other portion, um, you know, it's, it's actually going to kind of drain onto the, to the paved area, uh, the, the uh, walkways, and then onto the field. So anything that came off of that area, even though it's pretty, it's, it's going to remain pretty vegetated, so you're not going to see a lot. It's really narrow, uh, so there's not a lot of area going there. Um, but it's, you know, again, it's not paved, uh, so it, it really shouldn't see much influence from that. Other questions specifically? Um, so where do we stand, I'll, I'll bring it up with drainage, where do we stand um, with the CONCOM and with that process? Yeah, so <coughs> we're, we're, gonna, <coughs> we're probably going to be filing this week, and then basically the CONCOM hearing will be on uh, July 24th. So that would be the first conservation All right. here. All right. <coughs> Other questions before I open it up for public questions? Just that we had talked about this in the, in the draft decision about providing hours of operation for the tennis courts, I think for the whole field. But, um, for operation as, as well as rentals. Do we have any of that? Yeah, currently, um, I had actually uh, got some draft comments that the school hasn't had a chance to take a look at, but I had emailed it very late at like 7 o'clock over to Andrew and, and Julie, so I'm, I'm sure they haven't had a chance to look at it yet. But what uh, we were proposing is consistent with what the school is currently doing, which is they're not having people out there until usually around 6, 6.30, and they're not having people out there after 9.30 at night. So that's what we would propose. And obviously, um, Julie and I had a, a friendly discussion about the Dover Amendment. We, we just, you know, we weren't raising anything about it. But basically, this would be for athletic, non-educational, you know, non-religious. Um, 6.30 in the morning till 9.30 at night. Yes. All right, I just want to make sure, because yeah. at first <laughs> I said, 6.30 to 9.30, you're going to use this for three hours? No, yeah, I no, can't no, be no. right. <laughs> yeah. I actually have no problem with the school's use, or even if they were renting the, the fields to the town. My concern would be more rentals of the facility, like the tennis courts especially, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, I don't know, running tennis club if there exists such a private entity that does some kind of tournament that might go later since people work, right? Yeah. Those, uh, those uses, I think, should not be subject to the same, should not be disqualified from uh, whatever Dover Amendment you might claim. I'm not really speaking that clearly, sorry. Sorry, can uh, you say that one more time? Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, rental to private entities should never be beyond what the school might use. I have no problem with what the school does. I, I like the noise that's coming from schools, so I have no problem. And I live in there next to Sturgis, and I can hear the games. You know, it's just it's part of being in a community. I don't have a problem with that. But, you know, now that you have the ability to rent these facilities, because they're very nice, um, that kind of usage, I think, should be limited, or at least not exceed. We're, we're not opposed to that. And, and we would basically agree with you that the Dover Amendment shouldn't apply to those to, to that particular instance. All right. Your contact okay. number that would be called if the lights are left on accidentally? Yes, we can, provide them, them. we can provide them to the police, we can provide them to the board, however many folks want us to do it. I, I guess I'd look for community input to see where they'd like to call to have those lights turned off if need be. Okay. Um, well, with that, so we do have, um, we'll get back to that in a second. Um, we've reviewed the plans. We have a draft decision. Some of the, the draft decision we're not going to go through right now, but that deals with some of the um, operational issues. What I just understood was that you had comments that we haven't seen yet, staff hasn't seen yet, so um, so we'll 
you know, that part of it seems like it's still open. Right. Um, yeah, we that we're not going to resolve call. tonight. Uh, so, um, but with that, um, uh, looking for public comment if there is any um, on either what's been presented tonight or or other. Um, just state your name. Uh, I'm Steve Chapman, 66 Causeway Road, and a brother to the tennis courts. I was at the last meeting, expressed several concerns. I will say I took a quick review of the new submitted material and found that most of my concerns have been addressed. I do have a couple of other comments that I would like to say this evening and make a couple of requests regarding the draft decision. With regard to the drainage report, um, I note that the curve number calculations a title tower school marblehead and the dated I think it was in October that led me to question whether in fact those were the correct calculations for this site I had questioned the adequacy of the proposed drainage system and the potential of high groundwater and as for the subsurface boring logs boring logs have been provided however they do not provide any groundwater elevations I believe it was in the stormwater report they mentioned the groundwater was, I'm not going to say for certain, but I believe they said five to six feet, maybe it was four to five feet. And I question the relevancy of that given where there was direct wetland impact, but I believe it's the south end of the field, the lower portion of that sheet. Typically where you have wetlands, you'd have a water source. And if there were direct impacts there, I have a hard time accepting that groundwater is four to five feet below grade. I just bring that out for the commission, the board's uh, consideration. I'm appreciative of the solid wood fence. I would ask that the current limit now terminates at the end of the tennis court, if that could be carried to the left, to the property line between the Wallace property and the Livingstone property. That's more in keeping with the limit of disturbance because they are doing additional clearing there and they've um, got the rain garden and there'll be tree removal and so forth. So as a minimum, I'd like to see that fence, request that fence be extended to the property line. With regard to the rain garden, they show an overflow and Mr. Barrow has mentioned that there was an overflow that would flow, I believe it's northerly to the left of that sheet to a property owned by the Municipal Light Department. And I would question, where does that go if it does overflow, if they don't get adequate infiltration? Secondly, with regard to the rain garden, rain gardens typically require minimum of quarterly inspections and annual maintenance. And I question the means of access to maintain and clean the rain garden. So that's regarding the, the drainage report. With regard to your draft findings, I would like to request that consideration be given on finding five. We're talking about parking and circulation. If a statement could be made that the parking will not be allowed on abutting public roadways. I realize you're stating this as findings, but somehow I want that in the decision, whether it's a condition or it's a finding. If you do not want parking on the abutting roadways. Uh, you keep going. Yeah, I mean, you that, that one's a problem for us, um, but. Okay. The Board of Selectmen are um, technically the roadway commissioners and set the rules and regulations regarding, regarding public roads. Okay. So this board can't really do Understood. that in an enforceable <coughs> way. Okay. okay. At least I hope it will be recorded in the minutes that there's concern of parking on the Yes, adjacent. that's correct. Okay. We can do that. To go back to the wooden fence. Um, oh, I lost my thought. Hmm. Yes. Again, whether it's a finding or a condition, that the fence will be installed. The wording currently says the applicant proposes 
you can propose, but there's no condition that says he's going to install it. And I like the term solid board fence, because I don't want to see a picket fence or an open slat fence. So I think the terminology is good. But rather than the proposed fence, I'd like to see it as a condition shall be installed. Mm -hmm. There is, there's a detail on the plan of the fence. But it only says, and, oh, and if it's on the plan um, that we approve, then um, I don't know if the detail says proposed. I did not catch that. But. And also, well, under findings, like it's really the conditions and the plans that govern. Okay, and Same then you get into discussions of minor changes and major changes and possible need for additional meetings. And I'm not suggesting it may happen, but if funding becomes an issue and they look to start cutting out elements of the project, there are cheap alternatives than a solid board fence. And that could be a minor plan change. Again, I just want to go on the record that it's understood that it's a solid board fence. And also I'd like to see some type of language that says it shall be owned and maintained by the applicant. That may be understood, but when that fence starts to deteriorate, it needs to be the responsibility of Austin Prep to make repairs or replacement. Do you think it'll be a wood fence or a vinyl fence? Yeah, I believe we call it out as wood now, but we could certainly do vinyl if that's wood preference. Uh, I'm just thinking about what might be easier to maintain for you. <coughs> Take a look at it. I prefer wood, but I'm not designing it. Why does it have to be white vinyl? I mean, Kelly, Lisa, I know. Okay, but, <laughs> you know, are you going to get out there and paint it? <laughs> Kelly, so it's kind of just vinyl, but it looks like. And then I believe my, uh, yeah, the, the trouble with the white vinyl is that you get all mildewy and stained. And, uh, with it. I, I think it's my final comment has to do with the operating hours. And 6.30 in the morning seems awfully early. Uh, I don't know for a fact what the town bylaw requires for construction, but I thought that was 7 o'clock. And why are you allowing recreational activities before you let construction occur? And 6.30 again is quite early. School starts at 7. Thank you. Other comments? Steve Marisol. Three Pilgrim Road, uh, an abutting neighbor to more or less down towards the baseball field. I'd like to just go on record of saying I agree. Oh, neighbor, um, on a couple, of, especially on the lighting issue, opposed the lighting issue. Uh, I'd like to go on record the same as the hours of operation. 6.30 just seems too early on a Saturday and Sunday morning. But again, the town doesn't allow until 7 o'clock in the morning. 9.30 is relatively late on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, especially a Sunday night, trying to put kids to bed. So just oppose the project of the lighting and the hours of operation. Thank you. Thanks. Again, if I may, Steve Chapman, 66 Causeway Road. One of my other comments that I failed to mention is I expressed concern at the last meeting of the terminology or statement that the use of the field and tennis courts will be consistent with that of the existing field. I take strong objection to that. It cannot be consistent with the current use if it's going to be used for longer hours in a lighted facility. And that's in your, I believe it's your finding 15. So I, I'd ask you to reconsider that statement. I understand it's still going to be a multi-use athletic field and it's going to be soccer, lacrosse, baseball and any other number of sports, but the use of the tennis courts is a new use in that location.
John. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Where was that? John. <coughs> Fifteen on page three. Okay. Hours of operation. Okay. Steve Marisol through Pilgrim Road on the design or the. It was, um, it's lined out for, it looks like, only soccer. So a multi-purpose field, the only two sports that technically could be played or not are baseball and soccer. I don't see how lacrosse, field hockey, can be played if they're not lined out. And on, that, on the design, it, if you go back, it's just soccer. So I don't see how it could be rented out to a lacrosse. Yeah, that's just a soccer field. That's not lined up. I don't, I don't think the intent of that plan is to show. Well, it's, it, it's the, the rental that I'm more concerned about. Because if it's only lined up for soccer, how could that be? It can't be rented out to lacrosse or field hockey or any other sport. Technically, it's not lined for it. It's not lined for soccer and baseball. I don't know. <clears throat> I'd like to see that written in and no other. No other sports besides soccer, if that's what's going to be lined, soccer and baseball would be the only two sports out there. But they'll rent that out to lacrosse, they'll rent it out to field hockey. It's not lined, technically, on that pl blueprint. I'm not, I'm not sure there was any... any it's a multi-purpose. Multi-multi-sports. Right. That is what it says. Other questions or comments? No. The field lines, just like at the high school or any of the schools in town, can be altered. It's not a signage. It's educational, you know, for physical education. Um, it's not as limited. It's that's why it's called multi-purpose field. So we're basically removing two existing baseball fields. We're condensing them down to from two soccer fields and a shot put uh, pit down to one multi-purpose field, tennis courts, and an infield practice field. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? That's what I have. All right. Um, so, where I believe we have things left. Um, we're looking for a revised photometric with the, um, with those, um, with the revised property lines. Uh, um, um, and um, and the, your responses to, or your comments on um, on the site plan review decision, um, I, I, I guess we we also we need to keep this open until you go through um, it, go through um, uh, the the, um, the conservation process, right? Because uh, that may lead to some changes with your stormwater design and, yeah. and other things. We'll probably have a better idea after the first con cop hearing All right. how things are looking. Um, and so I, I think that at that next meeting we will have your comments on the decision. We heard um, uh, comments uh, tonight. We'll have the photometric. Um, any other uh, any other plan changes you you end up incorporating? Oh, on the um, photometrics, I guess I would say if you're going to present both options, be be willing to accept either option. I don't know how the board's going to vote, so. If you present the 90 foot tall and the 80 foot tall option, you can live with either one of those. That's all. Mm -hmm. all right. okay. So the next meeting is August 12th, and we could schedule this for 8 o'clock. Would that be, would you feel like you have um, yeah. feedback on August 12th? All right. What's our date? August 12th. August 12th. Move that the CPTC continue the public hearing for the site plan review application at 101 Willow Street, Austin Preparatory School, until um, Monday, August 12th, you said? Yep. Yep. At 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Second. All those in favor? All right. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Street. Oh, we didn't get the Howard Street. Street. Yeah, Main. No, we did get Howard Street. Oh, sorry. Um. So we got 107 Main, right? And Howard Street. Howard Street. It's a small email chain. All right. So we want to um, continue those till August, both of those till August 12th. Mm -hmm. And so um, Howard Street, we can schedule at um, 8.15 and uh, 258 Main Street, we can schedule at 8.30. No, this is yet another, right, we continued. Well, so the next item on the agenda is 135, 139, and 149 are yeah. Howard Street, which okay. the applicant has requested that we continue um, to the next meeting, uh, which would be August 12th. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Um, and then the <laughs> the next item has also um, been it's been requested that we continue it to August 12th. That's uh, 258 262 Main Street, Reading CRE Ventures LLC, um, and that the request is August 12th, and we would schedule that at 8:30. Mr. Chairman, point of information: How long has this one been out there? Yeah, it seems like it's been out almost a year at this point. It's December. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we have a time limit on site plan review applications. That would have to be in the local regulations or the bylaw because it's not statutory. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe we have a limit. Okay. So. Move that the CPDC continue the public hearing for site plan review at 258 262 Main Street. Reading CRE Ventures LLC until Monday, August 12th at 8.30. 30. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? No, I'm in favor. Oh. <laughs> signatures now yeah. that the other one's over. Yeah, and you guys can sign away. Oh, yeah. Endorse plans whenever you. Okay. You know, take turns or whatever. Sure, I'll go first. Just three signatures needed. Okay. So uh, next on our agenda is um, um, well, <coughs> let's uh, yeah, uh, let's take this out of turn um, a little bit. We'll take uh, mixed use regulations, um, and then is we'll there move foot. Well. I think we have someone more interested here, and more yeah, interested in mixed use than no, I'm, I'm more no interested in the first one. Yeah. 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 Derail the foot what? Out. The first mm -hmm. one. Oh, you are. Okay, yeah. then let's take that's it okay. in order. I just no, 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 that's fine. I was trying to. I know. Thank you very it. much. I know the footnote one is the one. Okay. I'm, and I'm going to sign while you um, carry on. Okay. Um, just give me one second. Just organizing. Do you all have a chance to look at the proposed changes? We did. Yeah. Do you have thoughts? Yes. <laughs> good. <laughs> I think that the one percent overall square footage is good. One percent. <laughs> <laughs> he said quiet. 
quietly. <laughs> he said it very quietly. No, I was, I'm glad that you came uh, last time because uh, it sort of raised awareness on that issue. And then I dug through my notes and I found something that I'd written on there from one of our meetings that said um, align with um, accessory apartment. Right. And so then I think um, Julie and Andrew worked this thing out. And I think it makes much more sense. Yeah. Um, I think it's a workable number because I've seen several accessory apartments come in. Right. Uh, those plans look pretty good. Yeah. So it seems to be able to work with these numbers. And I think it meets the intent of the original bylaw, which is to keep them small, you know, not too, too large. And I added a paragraph about um, after the structure being converted under the footnote um, to kind of get at that whole idea of like when does the do the rights to the two family like cease to exist? Do that? Did you think that was like okay? No, I thought was that town council might have something. To say I was about. thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be tricky. I think. Because I'll tell you that a lot of these two families are getting converted to apartments or to condos. So I don't know about the conversion ones, but the original two families that were two families are now condos, right? If they were two families when they were built, they're now condexes, I guess is what I want to say. I don't know about these that got converted into two families, whether they're also making those into condexes. And I'm not so sure that's a great thing for the town, honestly. So I'm talking about the paragraph about... After um, structure is converted to two-family. At yeah, such so time that the original structure ceases to exist, rights to the two-family under the footnote. Shall right. It just continues. So I'm not, I'm not understanding your feedback. I so my think. concern is this. If they've converted... Well, yes, you're right. That It doesn't really go there. But I guess what you're saying is when it ceases to exist... If there are two conducts, if it's demolished, right? That's what I'm get, trying to get at here. So physically, there would be nothing. Physically ceases to exist. Right? Should I say physically ceases to exist? No, I don't, I don't know. What if no. we go positive with it and just say that you know if it's demolished? Not in those words, but to say that if the existing structure is removed or demolished or something like that or in its entirety. Okay, yeah. Well, then you have the issue of accidental demolishing and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. demolition is strange, right? If it's a fire, if there's a fire... Well, if there's a fire, would you let them rebuild it? No. Oh, so involuntary <laughs> demolition is usually somewhat protected under yeah. mass general law. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess, I'm sorry to interrupt, but no. going back to two-family, is a condex a two-family? Or is it two condos, two individual single-family units? So... <laughs> ownership is, is not a strong yeah. part of it. We don't okay. deal with ownership, like tenancy okay. type in zoning. Um, yeah, I don't know the answer. We really just look at like how many units are on one lot. Right. 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 Um, so I'm not sure that that would necessarily a play a role, but okay. like, yeah. That's fine. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem at all. My first question becomes, what do you mean by the structure ceases to exist? Do they take it down and just leave the um, leave the foundation? Do they leave one wall? Yeah, right. So that needs to be clarified. Because that's like getting back into that same, what is meant by the word alteration? Yeah. Right. Um, what's the definition of structure? Because I think we do define structure. We do define structure, and structure, structure includes a tennis court and a, and a pool. Right. Um, so sure. uh, a foundation, would, to me, would fall into that same, yeah, that same thing. I mean, there's no difference from a foundation and a pool. Well, what you could fix it just by saying, you know, any future addition or substantial... Um, Alteration. Well, we can't use the word alteration because we, as, as has been pointed out, we define the word alteration by saying that it includes reconstruction. And so people take that to mean it also includes demolition. Full demolition. 
demolition and reconstruction. Um, I don't know, honestly, if you want my opinion, I'm sorry <laughs> to keep butting in, but I don't know that now that you've addressed it by how big it is, does it matter if it exists or doesn't exist down the road? You've already granted the fact that it's on that property. Yeah, so. I think it does, just based on some feedback we've received from town council. Like, this footnote only applies if the structure, the original pre-1942 structure is still well, standing. If they took it down and rebuilt it as a brand new structure as a two-family, it wouldn't. Right. Right. It wouldn't have so. that same right. Gotcha. Right. One more signature. I'll let you. So what are we stuck on? Um, in the bottom, about after a structure is converted to a two-family under the, um, the third line in the middle where we, I wrote, at such time that the original structure ceases to exist. Um, there's some comments that maybe that's too vague. Like maybe, what does that really mean? Um, we would probably need the caveat that unintended demolitions or unintended right. damage to a structure, lightning, not including voluntary destruction. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's defined. It's already as well. covered. I think. Well, is it in this file in this tab? Um. Yeah, so we already cover like reconstruction after catastrophe in section seven. We probably want to see also section seven. Mm, I don't know. No. We need circular yeah. references. We don't usually do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Reads problems later. Yeah, because then if we s switch one section, we refer to it in like four other places. Got it. It gets tricky. Um, And the voluntary demolition or reconstruction is the entire problem where basically it says that in the event that the proposed reconstruction would A, cause the structure to exceed the lot coverage of the original non-conforming building, so if you can still build, you can still build, or B, cause the building or structure to be located other than the original footprint, the building inspector may issue a building permit if the proposed reconstruction will not extend the non-conformity or create a new kind of non-conformity. While it was conforming, so I'm going to tear it down and build a brand new one that in theory conforms. It's just brand new and didn't exist in 1942. And that's where you get the entire crux of the problem. Well, um, one of the many. One of the many. Yeah. Right. So if we put a percentage of the original structure no longer exists. I think I think I should just say the original pre-1942 single-family yeah. dwelling is voluntarily demolished. Right. Yeah. Or I was going to say the Something original like eight supposed. finished and habitable, habitable principal rooms. Why should we lose that? that? We've gotten into, yeah. if you knock down three of the walls and then refinish the floor. Are they original? Yeah, right. Is that original room if one wall is... Right. So if they knock down, if they try and do that with four of the eight and build the rest do, do we uh, right i mean uh, do you really <laughs> care when when it's all within that 10 percent right framework anyways right, right. you know you're you, you're not gonna so i think it's really this 
structure, right? It's that okay. we're about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, except we can't use the term structure because that is defined. So what if I say the original single family dwelling? Pre-1942 yeah. single family dwelling. Right. Mm -hmm. Does that work? I think so. Yeah. We want to say such rights do not extend beyond vol um, after voluntary reconstruction or something to that effect. I I said this is what I was thinking. At such time that the original pre nineteen forty two single family dwelling is voluntarily demolished, rights to a two family under this footnote, whether granted by right, well or by a special permit, blah blah blah, shall be discontinued. I like, I like that. that. Okay. Next meeting, we'll find. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. There you go. <laughs> it's a lot of plans there. So, did you read the comments I wrote on the I side? I was going to ask about your comment. Um, Was she there in this audience? In the 100 years of signature. <laughs> okay, so then I had a question about like, we are aligning it with. Accessory apartment, but not entirely, because this is kind of a different thing. Like, accessory apartments are supposed to be a certain size based on the principal single family structure, but these, in theory, you could take a pre 1942 structure with eight finished habitable rooms and create two units of the same size. Right? So, this isn't an accessory apartment necessarily. Say that. But what I'm saying is, we're aligning with it with uh, accessory apartment in some ways but not entirely but there are some performance standards in accessory apartments that probably should also apply to, to I guess the special permit uh, it's zoning board for both okay so having sat in on their latest one uh, the building inspector thinks that our accessory apartment language is vague yes it is I don't think it is that's a difficulty that we've been having all along, is how do you, it is big, and many, only because it's, when you're looking at so many varied applications of it, it's hard to say, okay, does the entry that goes to two units get included, or do you, and the biggest thing is, do you include the square footage of the structure after the accessory apartment is built? Or, because no. I'm, well, I'm in a situation where I have a existing house, and I'm going to carve part of it out as an accessory apartment, I can use the entire existing house for my square footage, even though I'm going to take part of it now and become an accessory apartment. Mm -hmm. Why is that different than taking the full square footage and using that as the percentage? That's where it's vague. Yeah. Okay. The intent is that there will never be more than 1,000 square feet added to it. But it, but it's not always a thousand. So this house, the total square footage is twenty six hundred square feet. I can't add a thousand square feet as an accessory apartment because it's only twenty six hundred square feet total. Right. He's saying no more than a thousand would ever be added. So less is fine. Right. But the problem is, that's right, less is fine. But if I, I, in this particular house, I need to use, I need to use the whole thing. Otherwise, I'm less than seven hundred fifty square feet. Which is not a good. I mean, you can't do anything in less than. I mean, you wouldn't want to. Basement first. <laughs> but a basement's more than 750 square feet. No, you finish the basement first, and then count, you can count that. Yeah, but it can't be finished because it's not high enough. It's a little bungalow space. Well, but the house exists. You can't build it bigger than 750. Like, not every single house should get to no, be 1,000 square feet. Better. No, and I agree with that. I'm not saying that it has to be 1,000 square feet. All I'm saying is getting to that number is very complicated because we're not clear about what that number is. But if you look at, a, for example, a split level, and it's, say, 2,800 square feet, but one level is 1,400 and the bottom level is 1,400, how do you... It says living space, I believe. Correct, and the living space is completely finished. The second floor is completely finished. Right. I want to carve off floors. part of that basement to make it into an accessory apartment. But I can't do it in less in that, in 1,400 square feet. I have to do it much less than that. But I can't get my egresses out because I can't get up and down on it. You know what I'm saying? It's just there are issues that don't make it f necessarily easy to 
allow this additional ability for people to have accessory apartments, which really, most of it is family that are coming to live, parents that are coming to live. That's all. It's just not, it's, it's so difficult in application. Are you keeping okay. track of these? I do. I have a okay. line, yeah. We can set up a meeting and, and with yeah, go through them. Mark and you, and we can yeah, and I'd say the zoning board also wants yeah. to see bylaws that say they need that somebody needs to certify that what is proposed is actually being built. That's the other thing, you know, who, who building official says what they've got, but there's no recertification at the end of the building set. There's no other drawings that go in and say this is actually what they did. There's no as built requirement. There's no as built requirement in there. Mm. So there's some other little quirky things that are going on. But oh, and the building special is supposed to do a final sign-off. He's supposed right. to, that final sign-off says it complies with the plans. It complies with the plans, but yeah, I, I don't know that there's an actual build set that shows, that's recorded, that says this is what was built and should be there for this accessory apartment. So you'll come back, somebody comes in, they redo the whole thing, and then you know, you're know you trying to recertify it, and a new owner buys it and says, well, this was what was accepted. There's no documentation of that. There's a sign-off that says there is, but what did they sign off on? There's no as-built, which for most zoning variances or uh, zoning special permits I are required. We have to have the surveyor go in and say this is what was built. Okay, we got off track a little bit here, but um, my point was the ZBA is going to review this special permit. They think some of the requirements in the accessory apartment are vague, but almost all of the conditions are waivable. Yeah, right. So which um, of the conditions do you want to include in that? Right. Well, like we could include them in a different way. So I was, so... Isn't it enough to just say that it has to keep looking like a single family residence? Isn't that what, or primarily, sorry, where is that? External appearance of the single family dwelling is retained. You know, you set a limit on the... Well, so I guess the question, like, so I wrote this in my notes, the comments on the side, and I know they're small, but... Um, If we have specific, certain specific requirements for accessory apartments, it feels like if we don't have a, or at least a reference to them or a requirement for these certain things. See, accessory apartment mm -hmm. is really not supposed to act like a two family. Right, but like, so, so some of these things here are like to that point. The two family is supposed to be like a two family. So having two driveways. That it says that it needs to maintain the external appearance of the existing single family dwelling. The dwelling, the building itself. So like I was thinking that from a changing the neighborhood character standpoint, like some of the things about the accessory apartment should still apply here. Yeah, they would, I guess, if you if you aren't changing it to a like two If we family. take out about the thing about the external appearance of a single family home, then like forget it. Then it's fine. It's like a duplex, mm -hmm. no big deal. With a two car garage on each end. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do not. I don't I don't know what you're getting okay, at. Because I'm being vague, but yeah. so basically in in this footnote one we have a sentence that the external appearance of the single family dwelling needs to be retained. Correct. So some of the performance standards of the accessory apartment get at that same idea that the neighborhood character and the single family appearance needs to be retained. So I was thinking that some of these should apply also. Uh, I guess what I have a problem with is right making this too complicated in the sense that this is a this is a footnote. To, to one use that applies to, you know, a, a select group of, of properties in town and to develop a whole set of performance standards to, uh, to a footnote. Well, I'm not saying we need to develop. I'm saying we could say C, section whatever, uh, but, G through K. Or but all those standards don't meet 
match yeah. us. So I guess I'm of the opinion that um, uh, um, ZBA, uh, you know, one of one of the things that they always need to grapple with is that you know does it uh, you just said the phrase you know um, is it is it in is it consistent with the neighborhood what's the um, right there's no they don't have performance standards on that right I, but that's one that's <laughs> aside from their like oh measuring it's 14 point you know 14 feet two inches and 14.3 inches that they're allowed or whatever the big call that they have to make typically is whether it's keeping them with the neighborhood right well, and to me, to, to me this says external parent it has to um, keep in the external parents of the existing sam, uh, single family home and so it's that same call I'm fine with keeping it that way because it forces them to make that same same sort of call does this still look like a single family home uh, without performance without <coughs> us dictating what that means they should be able to make that call uh, that's my opinion. so if without you went through like what I'm asking is go through section 5473 on standards for accessory department and just say right now that it's okay that these things don't always have to apply to it to footnote one to a conversion under footnote one because some of these things i think are valid things that we should care about all motor vehicles owned or maintained by occupants of an accessory apartment shall be parked off the street in a designated driveway area or garage for example like but that's a town bylaw to begin with. You're not allowed to it's park. It's a town bylaw under accessory apartment. No, it's a town bylaw. You're not allowed to park on the street. There is some street parking in town. Keep I'm, going down. Right. Yeah. Right. So I had ruled out some of the early ones. Um, no, I'm wondering if we haven't worked our way back oh, to like for, Oh, for, okay, yeah. So where two or more entrances already exist on the front facade of a single family dwelling, modifications made to such entrances in order to accommodate an accessory apartment shall result in one entrance appearing on the principal entrance, appearing to be the principal entrance, and the other entrances appearing to be secondary. I think, like, one thing that we struggled with dealing with developers and the footnote was that, that we had no parameters. We were making, like, very subjective ad hoc decisions about whether it looked like a single family or not over the counter and I'm just thinking that it might be nice to give the zoning board like they have guidance for accessory apartments and why wouldn't like some of the guidance still apply in this case as well I guess mm -hmm. I, my take is because every house is different and um, and some of the things that get brought up, they, you, you have to have, um, they have to be given some latitude to figure it out. And it's, I think it's different, a board figuring it out and making that determination that versus, versus staff at the counter. Those are, that's, it, it's two different dynamics. Okay. I personally am fine with leaving it the, without the performance criteria, but we can, that's my opinion. Especially right now, it's going to a special permit process, so staff doesn't have to make that decision. Yeah, no, I know, I get yeah. that. I just, yeah. I don't know. I know, you struggle with it, so. You yeah, want and to I, I just. Be clear, yeah. I just I feel it. like the zoning board's going to come back and be like, you gave us no guidelines for this at all. We're not used to dealing with these things, except for accessory apartment. So they might defer to them anyway, which. That's what they, I don't know. That's what they want to do. Right. That's their call. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I get it. It's cool. Whatever. I'm all for keeping it simple. I just thought by leaving things out, are we going to end up with more complications than more questions than answers? Of so. course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's zoning. <laughs> I, mean, it, I mean, it sounds like we worked our way back to uh, take out the, the, the footnote entirely. Just okay. allow it. I mean, that's, that's a, a clean, simple. Uh, resolution. I mean, yes, it it takes away some um, rights, if you will, that have been exercised how many times? Um, I don't know, actually. That's a good question. I mean, if it's if it's you know, three people did this over the past thirty years, dump it. 
Well, so I'm, like, I'm going to go three. with yeah. about eight in the last five. Talking about accessory apartments or no. footnote one? Mm -hmm. Footnote one. It's, it's been a decent number. Yeah. I was looking at it a decade ago. I only had six rooms, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it has come up a lot. Matter of fact, there's another zoning board hearing on yeah. July 17th. Yeah. Same okay. exact thing. Question and answer. Thank you. Welcome. I, I think I like it the way it is. Right. I mean, not the way it is, the way that it's been. Okay, but no performance standards All right. whatsoever. Do we want? <laughs> well, no, they have know, to make know, a call. Know, they need to be the, just kidding. Just the kidding. professional <laughs> volunteers that they are. <laughs> just like us. Yeah. <laughs> Volunteer professionals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and I finally understand the point you're trying to make. The accessory apartment says it can be no bigger than a thousand square feet or one third the size of the original building. So if your building is only 1,500 square feet, you can only have a 500 foot, even with an addition, accessory apartment. Correct. That's not what we're saying here, is that you can add in your 1,500, you can go up to 2,500, and you can split that down the middle for 1,250 apiece. In a two family. In a two family. Yeah, not in a So they're entirely separate. Correct. So we'll continue the, this one. I'll reward it and we can vote next time. Does okay. That sound good? Yep. Okay. Thank you for. Thank you, Nancy. What's next? Which, yeah, which shall we look at next? Mixed use or intensity regs are kind of together. Right. Um, so for mixed use, I just went through and I took the feedback from last time. I accepted some of the changes I had proposed. Um, let's see if there were outstanding questions. Um, oh, yeah. So under mixed use regulations, section 568. Um, you added the reference to the South Main Street design um, best practices. Can we do that in zoning? Can we do that under 40A is reference in zoning a, another document which isn't a... Well, I think that um, that's not going to answer your question because I think 40R does, but that's 40R. So. Right. Y yes. Um, which is the, I mean, it's which 40R is, and 40A. Right. Which is the beauty of 40R right, is that is you can do that. Um, right. Which is why these um, are called guidelines is because they're they're we 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 couldn't do that. I don't know the answer to that, but that's a good question. We can ask town council unless you think it should, I should just take it out. I mean, we do say we reference it, and then I say to the maximum extent practical because it's not zoning. So maybe it I, I, I I like it, but I just don't know whether that's um, allowed. allowed. Yeah, we can ask him. Okay, we've got in five six eight three, and perhaps elsewhere. It explicitly says Main Street. Now, haven't we separately identified primary business streets or? But that's in the um, downtown smart growth district design okay. guidelines. It's a separate place. Um, so, When under commercial component, when we're talking about the percentage of gross floor area, or sorry, of floor area for um, commercial use, I was doing some like calculations earlier today just to see like how it would play out, and in every instance, netting out areas for 
like building circulation and mechanicals before taking the percentage for commercial results in a bigger percentage for commercial. Like, it seems counterintuitive to me if it worked out that way, but like. Well, except that, the, I mean, counterintuitive sort of, but the netted out items uh, are more likely to occur in associated with the commercial use. Well, so I wrote it so that they could net out common areas for residential circulation utilities, structure and building services, mm -hmm. but not the commercial piece. So Is they're allowed to share elevators and corridors, you know, basically? So I guess I what I'm getting at isn't, is is the isn't goal that the to opposite? kind of reduce the it, burden a little bit. Isn't that the opposite than what we really want to do? I mean, the goal is here's a goal simply stated is you have a four story building, you want the first story to be commercial. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, if it's a if it's a rectangle, right? Um, okay, and yeah. yes. Yeah. Which it never is, yeah. but that's okay. Um, because um, typically the bottom floor is bigger. Um, and so uh, I, I have a hard time seeing someone developing the um, first floor as smaller and, <laughs> and going up, at least in Reading, right? Pregnant building. Um, what's that? The pregnant building? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just not going to happen in Reading, I don't think. And maybe it's whatever. But, um, but, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, but what we also want to recognize is that if you do that, just th then, um, then the all the circulation, all the other components, which may be considered like the access stairs into the residential, then become residential, and then that's we're below twenty five percent immediately. But the idea, I think, right, the idea was that you don't start carving up that first floor into half of it being dedicated to, to residential. Because then that means that we're, we're reducing our commercial square footage in town. Right, so I guess like, are we, what was the, because we were hearing like 18% commercial is like kind of the, the max, and we were saying we want 25%, so we were going to try to meet them in the middle by allowing them to like um, take credit for some building systems or net out the building systems before they do the percentage requirement mm -hmm. or after. Like was the goal to try to meet them in the middle and maybe end up with like 20 or 22% commercial floor plate? Because like, I can write this to match like the math that I was doing, <laughs> but I just wasn't as I was doing it. I wasn't really sure. And then would we let them net out areas for the residential only, so that don't really count towards the commercial or the whole all of the building utilities systems in common areas? Then because if we allow them to include like the commercial mechanicals and common areas, then we might end up with like super large bathrooms. Well, no, I don't know why, why that would be, but you know, like they yeah. might play with that, play a game with that. If you have four floors that reach 100 square feet. Mm -hmm. right, this is a good example, the 400, I was using that number when I was doing that. And like John said, you want that first floor to be entirely commercial. Right. But some of that first floor is going to be common area lobbies, mm -hmm. elevator, stair that get you upstairs. Yeah, access. Management. Some of that's going to be mechanical. Some of that's going to be trash. So that that first floor, what's left, should be entirely commercial. And so that's less than twenty five percent, right? Well, so say like for example, there's two ways to do this. So if it's four hundred square feet, and you need, say you need 20 square feet for 
like, and then this just scales up, you know, so if it's for 40,000, it'd be 2,000 or whatever. So if you need 20 square feet for, you know, the stairways and whatever, all that stuff, and you, do you take it out of the 400 and then do the 25% off of 380? Or do you yes. take it, do you do the 100, which is 25% of the total building, and then take it off? No. You net, you take, so I did it this way. You have four stories, 25% of each. I took 2% per floor for the elevator, and I put 4% on the bottom floor. So that's 10. I basically took 10% off mm -hmm. for 10 square feet off. So I end up with a total building of 90 square feet. 25% mm -hmm. of the 90 square feet is 22 and a half. So mm -hmm. you're asking the commercial to be 25% of the netted square footage component. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that and so and that includes everything. That's not just the common areas for re the residential floors. It's the non yeah right rentable space basically. But so your circulation you're showing goes all the way up four floors. What if there's mechanical rooms, mail rooms, trash room? Those don't go up four floors. I just was taking a cut of each of them basically. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm cutting each of them, and so every point in time, I'm just taking out things that aren't bedrooms and rentable space. What if we told them the first floor had to be commercial? I guess that's, yeah, that's what I was starting with. <laughs> like, like yeah. just forget about the percentage. Right, so if we forget the right. percentage, let's work this out. So they're going to run their scam now. They're going to figure out yes. how to reduce that first floor, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. right. Like I was thinking. So what do we that. end up with on that first floor? We end up with 50% of the first floor being commercial. Well, look at um, look at what happened on Main Street, whatever that's called, Sunoco. But they had to put parking. Five hundred square feet. In. Right. Well, that's what that's what made up that. If they had uh, underground parking or if they had a parking lot, right? That first floor could have been mechanical mm -hmm. trash, and the yeah. rest would have been commercial. That's. That's a very specific condition, right? But we got nothing out of that. You know, we get this little strip of yeah. potentially, I don't know what it's going to be. Dunkin' Donuts! <laughs> 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 yeah, it's going to be, uh, I think it will be like a, a, a self, uh, self oh, yeah. 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 All right. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 I mean, the other way of looking at it is, you know, you, t you take a building footprint, call it uh, 800 square feet, and as soon as you put one floor residential above it, you've got uh, access, you've got uh, safety. I mean, you've got a whole bunch of uh, code issues that necessarily eat into the 800 square feet of the mm -hmm. first floor. Or there it's, you know, an adjacent access tower or something. I mean, so you, uh, I would say Haven Street's a really good example because they were fortunate enough to have the subterranean parking, so they didn't have to deal with parking at all. They have some common areas to get you around to some of the spaces, but the rest is commercial. That's at least 20% of that building, right? And then you've got a big cutout on the front, you know, between the two tower pieces. They did have something like 25 or 27,000 square feet. There. Right. So if you can get the entire, so that's pretty decent. We're assuming that they're going to find parking somewhere else. Some of it might be under the building if the grade works out, mm -hmm. but I doubt somebody's going to dig us a parking garage. Yeah, some of the um, uh, <coughs> eastbound side of uh, South Main Street has great grade right. potential. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at the, 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 the bridal shops. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Right. So maybe that gets you know gets you around and they build you some subterranean parking and then you've got grade. Right. So I mean, maybe eighteen percent is the minimum. Twenty percent. What I was saying was, if you if you said that the first floor had to be commercial, and they start putting in all the stuff that they have to, and only half of that ends up yeah. being commercial, that's twelve percent, right? Yeah. Twelve and a half percent. Yeah. They did it right. Well, half of the twenty-five. Right. That's too small. So force them to figure out the rest. Maybe the, um, <coughs> the the common room for the apartments has to be upstairs, okay. right? It can't be on the first floor. The, the common, what do they call it? 
Yeah. The mail room. Community Not room. the mail room. No. no. no the, this uh, is a conference room type. No, like a rentable space. Community room. Community, community room. room. Can't be on the first floor. It has to be commercial. So then, <laughs> Gold Street that? did that on the first mm -hmm. floor, though. But Gold so Street has its community room on first floor. It's got yeah. an exhibit. But they have again. The they have the floor. parking sort of taking up part of that lower level. Even though there's some grade change there, yeah. it's still parking. Right? If they could have gone completely under, we would have had the whole first floor for some commercial space and the support spaces for those commercial spaces. So what you're getting at, or what I'm hearing you say, is that if we end up, if <coughs> if it's an 18, if it's 18 percent, not 25 percent, where you, Julie, you said that your feedback was 18 percent was. So yeah, that was what. Um, that yeah. what I think, Nick, I hear you saying is that 18% is once we <coughs> subtract out most of the, that, that other stuff that we were talking about, the most we'll probably get is 18%. If the, if the, if the true goal here is sort of to maintain as much of that commercial first floor that we can get. Can we so say 18% without any netting? 18%, not including. That's give. That's the any of these. The, here's the, the farm. Can you give rooms. away the farm? It's 18%. I know. I'm really struggling with that part well, of it. It's I like I'm trying to make it feasible. <coughs> then I'm looking at it and going, I just don't want all this residential if I'm not going to. I don't. I mean, like, if right. they say 18%, we're just going to give up at this point. To you guys. We're trying to make that number be the 25% somehow. Yeah. What does 25% right. get us? Is it really 25% commercial or is it? 15% right. commercial with another 10% support space for that. Which is, which is that's what we were trying to do with the netting out, which is yeah. fine. I think we're understandable that it doesn't need to be 25% gross percentage of the all of the square footage in the building. And that's what we're trying to say is we're accounting for everybody's HVAC space, etc. I think it's rentable space. I don't know. If we net it out first, are we going to end up with like huge community rooms and huge amenities for the residential that are common? That you know, as a way to reduce yeah. their commercial burden, but make the residential more attractive or whatever. Well, can't you say something to the effect of the first floor shall be dedicated to commercial other than access for the residential units. Statutory that, access, yeah. Yeah. And that takes care of most of it. I mean, you're going to have to have elevators and stairways and so forth if you exclude residential um, mechanicals and parking. Everything else has to be um, commercial. Can you say well, something on here about the first floor having to be commercial, right? Mm -hmm. Only when fronting Main Street. Except that with that, then uh, they would put, you know, 85% of that first floor would be parking. Well, I said eliminate parking, eliminate mechanicals, just the access. Just access. Mm -hmm. Now, you're looking at a four story building. What happens when you do a two story building and you've got 25%? Hopefully, that's not going to happen in a mixed use project. I mean, I, I don't think the map, the economics are I don't good. Think the economics would work. <laughs> you could do it FAR style, and you know, <laughs> you could uh, you could sell more um, re more thing? residential for more commercial. You know what I mean? <laughs> Basically, yeah. well, you want a fourth story, you add more commercial space. Two fifty-eight. They're <laughs> four stories, and they came back with a one-story building. So yeah, right. Was one story was more, in their opinion, more feasible than two. Right. Definitely than four. But at, I mean, this time. at the same time, we can take a look at some of the successful, uh, if you will, places that have, that have worked that way, like Moody Street and Waltham, like Brookline Village. I mean, where they've got a, a robust standard, I and mean, it's been there forever, commercial, and this residential two or three stories above it. And it's you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that we can reproduce that, but that's the kind of thing that would actually fit South Main Street if we could get there. I'm 
not sure that you can build that same yeah hundred um, year old the, yeah that yeah. same thing and sell it well, I right because there's a lot I mean, of amenities that are <laughs> missing in that um, well but, but I, I get what you, I get yeah, the point I, you know, yeah like one side of the street we've got the uh, the drop off from Main Street and the other side we've got the uh, the fairly oh, steep grade change. And it's the kind of thing, if, if you don't know how to encourage success, <laughs> then we're not going to get it. Then the other piece of this is um, that if we're talking about a mixed-use project that has multiple structures, like if, say, there's a agglomeration of sites and whatever, a bigger opportunity comes up, like, would we require commercial on the bottom floor of every structure or just the one that fronts on Main Street? And Or would we allow one building to be commercial and the other one to be residential? Do I address that at all in here? Oh. I think that's covered by the Main Street. They can be combined. It says up here, mixed use. They can be combined either horizontally or vertically. Mm -hmm. Or within the same structure or separated into different structures. So, like the way under commercial component A, we <coughs> talked about 25% of the total floor area of the structure or structures, but we've really only been talking about it as if it's one building. I guess when you say or structures, it's just so. So, what do you think that means? Do you think that means a four story residential building and then a two story commercial building or a one story commercial building? I mean, not well, the way sense. the lots are um, configured right now. Probably not. Probably does mean one building. We would see one building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hard time thinking of. But. Especially. Yeah. Narrowing it. I, I have a hard time conceptualizing. Yeah. Right. Where that may occur. Given mm -hmm. our situation. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just go back to, I mean, the entire component of what we're doing here, right? We're creating a mixed-use opportunity. So we're giving some additional benefits to a builder that is not allowable if they didn't do it this way, correct? Yeah. So that, so in order for them to access these benefits, right. they have to provide commercial. They can't just provide. Right. So I just I want to just keep coming back to that point when we get yes. this pressure, right. yep. which is they want the good stuff without giving us what we're trying to incentivize. Right. So we need to figure out. I mean, we as a board want twenty five percent of yeah. the new building to well, be. We as a town. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's what I'm saying. So right. we can play with all these numbers so that it sounds better or whatever it is or so that they we can create some pieces so that they don't skirt around it. I mean, it's either one way or the other. Either we're trying to give them a little bit more space because we know that they have to build on the mechanicals in the common areas or we are trying to actually put a fence around it and say, no, like, don't mess around with this. We want you to do 25% or no, you can't build here. Well, I, I guess I'll say that I don't think that if, if we stuck to 25% um, and depending on how we define that, knowing full well that they need a, a residential access stair and, and elevator, then the only way to do this is put like second, you know, commercial on the second floor. And that starts to become a whole different thing. Definitely. Right. Well, um, I mean, it could be. A medical building would not be a bad idea. No, no, no. no, no. I'm just saying 25, without netting out anything, right? I mean, just flat out 25%. Out, right. right. Probably going to end up on multiple floors. But right. Net it and out, it should be all okay on the first floor. Net out everything. Commercial, uh, residential yeah. and commercial. Common and areas for circulation, utilities, structure, and building services. And, and so the question to me is not whether that's the right thing or the right the right number, but are those the right words so that we don't have a situation where they, where a developer comes around and says, well, 
like like Julie said, oh, we'll make this common, you know, room, you know, huge. And play so. the fitness center for residents, and yeah. Yeah, and play those games so that we still we end up with a tiny little commercial because that, that's not really what they want to do. They want to put all that. Cool. Yeah. That's to me. That's the only thing that we that we need yeah, to make I agree sure. With you. Yeah, I think the words I think are the there. 20, I think the words are there. I think we just need to make sure that that you know that we have the solutions are at math works. <laughs> yeah. So do you? And, what do you th and and Tony had, I think, close to the right thing that just was access. Um, access and mechanicals. Just leave it at that. I don't know how big mechanicals would need to be. 10%, 15% of the, for, so for the four, hypothetical four story, 100 square feet, so it'd be a 15 square feet out of the, out of the 75 for residential? Yeah, by the time you, if you're, if you're not, you're not talking about net rentable though, because you start subtracting structure, you get much less than that. Well, and then, yeah, are we talking about gross? Or are we talking about... Yeah, gross. You guys took the word gross like out of the original. Or 15, if I'm doing like a really big plan, it's 10 or 15 percent of that. It's going to be mechanical space. But I guess my building is pretty mechanical, how you said. The lab buildings. I mean, I have no problem with it. If it simplifies it and makes it easy to enforce and people to understand, I have no problem with saying <clears throat> mechanicals and access. Access I, meaning like loading docks and stuff like that as well? Well, residential access. It's going to be commercial except for residential mechanicals and residential access. Because a loading dock would be commercial. So no parking, you know. Uh, not really. I mean, they could use it to, to um, move people in. Yeah, but more... Mostly, it would probably be. It would be part commercial. of your calculation, yeah. right? I think yeah. it might be simpler to just say access and mechanicals, though, because like that, there's going to be that question of what do you do on the first floor space, like where everyone's using the entrance and everyone's using, or maybe not everyone, but it could be used by commercial or residential, yeah. or yeah. it might just be cleaner. As to long say, as access isn't considered parking, <laughs> right? No. Right. Right. I mean, to me, that's the one thing that. So what would we say, building access? Um, How would you word circulation. that? Circulation and egress. Circulation yes. kind of talks, gets to like the whole parking thing, though. I don't think so. It's, it doesn't say parking. It's Sorry, I mean like... Yeah. You could say circulation and egress or access and egress. Access, egress, and mechanicals. Or What's access, though? Mm -hmm. Door entrance. Door egress. Can you get a stretcher up there? Okay. <laughs> Accessibility. Right. That's code, though. I mean, anything required by code, you know, though it's going to be a fire fire pump room or a fire alarm room. Should we say? egress and mechanicals. There's going to be a central utility and data room. Those are all utilities. So what common areas for? Mail pickup and delivery. I mean, it's I mean, residential circulation and egress covers everything you need for access and getting up there. It has nothing to do with parking. Right, OK, but I'm thinking we should take away the word residential and just have it be taken that out all circulation and egress of the building. Some of it's going to be on the first floor. Circulation, access, circulation, and egress. It gets all the words in there. Mechanicals and utility. Do we say, do we want to say mechanicals too? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Yeah, and access is going to be a little bit more complicated. Yeah, and access is going to be a little bit more complicated. Yeah, and access is going to be a little bit more complicated. Yeah, and access is going to be a I'm not gonna. If we take out structure and building services, because that's like very big, and we just say access, circulation, egress, mechanicals, and utility, mechanical and utility, space needs, space is needed, or space needed for, or something like that. Access, circulation, egress, mechanicals, and utilities. Okay. 
And so then it's 25% of the remainder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The incentive of this works because you're not going to want to, you know, mess around with that space to just to reduce your commercial footprint because that's going to mean that you're also reducing the residential space as well. So I think, yep. you know what I'm saying, like you're not going to be specifically reducing your overall mm -hmm. square footage just to reduce your commercial number because that will affect your bottom, bottom line. line. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and it, yeah. it's, it's creating, okay. it's creating a, a fairness factor of saying we're not going to ding you for things that, you know, yeah. don't count for this. Okay. <coughs> All right. Um, <laughs> so, are we making progress? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think so. that was it. That's. I may, I edited. I changed the parking thing because you guys talked about wanting a minimum. Minimum. Mm -hmm. um, and it was 1.25 spaces per unit, and then one space per 300 square feet of commercial. I put in a thing about shared parking arrangements because we actually talked about those in the parking section of the bylaw. And um, then I added a section um, under 5686 six about curb cuts and driveways. So I was thinking about this. Ah. And it might be nice if redevelopment projects could start to account for future where you can pass through one site to the next without having to go back to Main Street. Is that a bad idea? I love that idea. <laughs> Part of that was enforced on Walker's Brook, right? We got the pedestrian bridge between the two supermarkets, yeah. but not the curb cut, I don't think. Somebody wanted... I think Market Basket wanted a curb cut through. Market Basket wanted a curb cut. Stop and Shop said no. Right. Because yeah, there is no. They want to connect to whatever. Yeah. 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 And there's one little triangle in the back that. It's owned by someone else. Yeah. Or it's owned by. Oh, yeah, I was looking at this the other day. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all wanted that. Yeah. Oh, oh there's an entire story behind that. I was right. there. <laughs> <laughs> but. So, so, yeah, there's. There's precedent for sort of asking. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um. What I want is them to continue upon Meadow Drive. Do you think that the way that it's worded is okay, and do you think it covers all? What should I add or take anything away? Such. Does it curb cuts off Main Street or on Main Street? Yeah, sorry. Like, can you limit curb cuts off Main Street, but then on a corner, say off, yeah, of, off Main of Main Street? Street? I meant off of like a. Yeah. I think it's it's a it's a curb cut on Main Street, is the term. That the curb cut is like, on it's Main Street. You to get off. Of yeah, I know. I, <laughs> but yeah. Once again, are we referring to a Main Street or the Main Street? It's Main Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Main Street. Okay, so just Main Street. Yeah. yeah. Well, right, and in this, the, the thing that you're getting at is design guidelines, not yeah. in the zoning bylaw. It's a separate. Is there any benefit to um, describing it as uh, curb cuts on uh, state roads? Is there any state road besides Main Street? Well, there are sections. Yeah. yeah. Well, Bash, West, West but that we're talking. Really? Ocean of Ash is definitely state. Oh. Well, up by the train? No, uh, actually behind Village Carpet. Interesting. Hmm. I'll have to pack it in soon. Okay. Main Street's fine. Parentheses. Yeah. 
you said Main Street for the other dog. Yeah, I think we're I good. I think Main yeah. Street. I would think that. <coughs> okay. Can I drop it mask? <laughs> yes, it is. Should we, um, okay, talk about intensity yep. regulations? Because um, it's only quarter of four. <laughs> all day. Um, I'm trying to remember what I came from. Oh, so then this section in here about gross floor area, we need to match what we just spent all that mm -hmm. time talking about. Yep. Oh, and then I had some comments about... Um, so like on the top under business where it says business aid districts gross floor area of a multifamily dwelling shall not exceed 40% of the lot area. I was thinking we might want to clarify like how that applies to multi to um, multifamily that's part of a mixed use project. And just maybe just say gross floor area of a multifamily dwelling. That's not part of a mixed use project or something like that. Well, do we just need to capitalize multifamily dwelling? I don't know if we define it anywhere. Well, well it it's a nice. category. It's a, it's a category. capitalized category. Is it? In our <laughs> table. And therefore, that would. It's not really, a, it's a use, it's not a it's category. Not a full fit category. It's right? a use. But, <laughs> but maybe, maybe it's, I'm just, maybe that's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to roll my eyes like that. No, <laughs> no, maybe that's choice. fine. I just, I'm just thinking of like. <laughs> Um, the, I only I I do that only because we're going back. These these categories now really mean something, and we don't define them anywhere, truly. But they impact a lot of what we do. The use table. The use. In the categories. use table. Yeah. Yes. Well, and, and we, um, to, to your point, like we're adding mixed use, and it's a use, but not a category, and we're capitalizing it and we're assuming that that means it'll be known what we're talking about. Right. So we could probably do that with multifamily hmm. dwelling. Hmm. That might be the simplest way to do this. Um, but the, that might be the simplest way to do this. you want it to go? Just keep it the same, but capitalize multifamily dwelling. So that it's distinguished from mixed use. Yeah. So that it's understood that it's supposed to be. Do it there, and yeah. we have to do it in multiple places, like six two five one. Yeah, we would. My concern is more about the rest of the bylaw that right, we're not exactly. looking at right now. Yeah. Like, this exactly. is like easy because yeah. we're looking at yeah. it, and, yeah. and it's been advertised, and we can do what we want. It would be a touch six two four two. Well, that's like the rest of the bylaw. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it doesn't. Inconsistent. But I think the point's taken, right? That, that that would be the easiest, but if not, then the not including right. so mixed use not. should be added. Yeah. Yeah. Should we just do both? Because I'm thinking of like. I'm 
I'm not a fan of your comment on, on 626. Only because that takes, that's like a whole, I think a whole, it's like a whole, um, whole not that it's not relevant or. Yeah. It just seems weird. But. But we are adding business A, and so I feel like the question could come up at town meeting about does this mean that this doesn't apply to business B? The question becomes, do you want to make mixed use a separate entry in the table of dimensional controls or you just want mixed use controlled by the new section? Because right now you've, you've got business A normal and then business A special edition mixed use. So everything, for example, buildings per lot. If you do mixed use, you can have more than one. If you don't, it was only allowed one building. Well, I was trying to match business A with mixed use in every place possible. My comment, I think, like, if you look at under 626, we would put business A in, but then I had a comment about should we include this all business industrial districts, and including, like, business B. And I think John was saying, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you, I, you were thinking we would keep business A, but not all the others. Correct. Right. Okay. To me, that sort of it's starts to expansive. go outside the, the four corners of what we're... It's getting the, expansive. Yeah. Not that it shouldn't be considered. But, like, I, my intention was for business A and mixed use to be together in all places. Like, this is... Because business A is the district that we're talking about. Right. Primarily. So your thought process pretty much was to change the requirements for business A to be those of mixed use. If you're allowing mixed use and to pretty much synchronize the two. Well, no, I mean, if you look at the dimensional controls, there are other types of uses that, mm -hmm. and so different things are allowed in business A based on what the uses that you're, sorry, there's different parameters. Yes. So I, we have specifically mixed use in business A. Um, and then the reason I included business C in the table is because technically in business C, we currently allow multifamily and commercial in the same building. So it's like cleaner to just put that there, I feel like. Um, in this table, Julie, how come you don't have two families or multifamily dwellings in business B? Either, either in the section one or two family dwellings, you don't list business B in there at all. Um, that's, this is the only changes that I made to this are the, in blue. And then I just highlighted where business A shows up. The, I think, I believe what you're getting at is that this is an imperfect table and I think you're correct. Okay. Yes. I'm just, yeah. Since I live in one of those. Um, but I, like you'd have to look back at the use Table and see, like, yeah, um, single and two family allowed in business A. Yeah, like, technically, business B wouldn't fall under one or two family dwelling because, like, you have an, a pre existing non conforming use in business B. I don't know if it's non conforming, I've never asked. It is, it is non like, conforming. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but it's like a pre existing non conforming, and we didn't take it away when we put in the overlay district. Like, we Okay. I mean, it still is what it is. There are a lot of two families in this whole Yes, yeah. that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. But I also but do think that ones. this is an imperfect table right. in some ways. Right. Right. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Sometimes it's too early, early mornings. Um, Your comment, GM5, the average size lot on South Main Street, 27,000, and the 
multifamily dwelling is the only use in business A for which the bylaw requires a minimum lot area? If you were to eliminate that, you would Well, the comment won't remain. I was just like notes for you. Right. Okay. But if we were to eliminate that 40,000 minimum, yeah. nothing but residential would be built right along that street. Well, right. right. We're not That's eliminating that. Like that conversation yeah. I think happened where it was like, let's keep multifamily the way it is. Because mm -hmm. we don't want to like incentivize it necessarily. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's just a note. So, I, I think that your comments on the special cases, right? We we talked about that last time. This comments on the special cases, and um, oh, right. Those, uh, although relevant, uh, um. The way that I read this, it doesn't necessarily, I think that whole thing needs to be revisited, um, but I don't think it's revisited as part of multi, uh, as this, um, as part of this multi-use. Because I, so, I don't see anything in here which sort of restricts it. I mean, really all we're talking about, it, the way that I read it is within 150 feet of a residence district, which is pretty much everything you need to add an additional five feet front setback yeah but like we don't want that um every single property on south main street then that's redeveloped has to do that and it's a setback that's not helping. It's actually pushing the development yeah, closer right, to the residential. Right. Um, I guess uh, I don't understand the whole table. I don't understand it at all. No, yeah. And I guess we, here, <laughs> this may be this is crazy, but so we A, we don't have too much more time tonight. Everyone's wilting. B, we don't have too much time in general, right, to get these done, and I, and th this has been here for the entire time that I've been on the board, and probably Nick and um, and David, and um, and I'm, I think this is its own, its own issue that should be an issue, should be. So are we just kind of like just keep ignoring it? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the question is, can we just take this, like, because I don't want to have to, um, yeah, so I'll take out any further comments, like there's only one in landscape standards, and then when we submit the zoning for the warrant, we'll just cut it off after the table. Yeah. We'll cut off special cases. Like, we don't need to include the rest of this. Right, 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 it. right. 
place. Because like that would be my concern, would be, like if we have it and like someone would bring it up. Yeah. <clears throat> you think? I guess, and I don't mind dealing with it, but I guess my fear is. We, if, in order, if we really take the time to understand, then this isn't going to town meeting. I mean, we're we're right, right. We're we're like at the we're at the end. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I understand. And I don't think we have enough time to to tackle that because I, I guess I keep reading it. I don't understand it. I mean, my my preference would just be delete the entire thing because Same. it makes no sense. However, to me, that raises a whole bunch of questions. Why is it in there in the beginning? And it obviously was trying to protect um, these transitional areas, which is a good, good idea. But if we delete them, what is what should actually have been in there? Yeah. Right. What do we lose? What do we lose? Yeah. And I don't. I'm yeah. not sure we have that much time to tackle that question. Although I think that's a that's a very important question to tackle. Well, we did just update it to last year because we made, we changed, made some changes for the industrial and we updated this table. We ignored, like, because of this very same reason, we just, like, ignored business A and B and C because we were like, we're not dealing with that right, right. now. <laughs> we're only dealing with industrial. So, yeah. note to self, let's, that's, we'll just get that's next year. Yeah. This and the accessory apartments and the sign by law. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing the sign by law. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep rolling with it. Yep. All right, great. So are we, I'll make some changes and we'll talk about it one more time, or do we want to? Well, well, was the I, hearing I, on the, to, yeah, and we'll make a recommendation to town meeting? Uh, on the mixed use? I guess, I, I thought that, right, there's a, before we take a vote on it, I'd like to see what it actually, like, the, right, we made a couple of changes, but I don't think that next discussion is a long one. No, it shouldn't be. Right? Hopefully, yeah. I think, sort of. We're close. We're very clear. Yeah. We're very close, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I would assume that we get stuck on some, um, the definition of is somewhere <laughs> along the line, but that's about it. <laughs> All right, great. Um, and so there's minutes. Um, and did we get three people to sign the plans? We did. All right. Um, did, um, I keep looking. It's still really early. 114. I, I, I went through 114. It's quarter past 10. My clock, clock is wrong. <laughs> Page one for the oh I guess it's really good. Oh, so you saw the article in the blog today I think it was or was it Saturday or something? Mm -hmm. CBD. Oh yeah so um yeah a lot of information about that yeah I so figured it would come up. The state screwing us again and instead of putting the onus on us to figure out what's yeah course, so this is what I'm thinking and I think that other town. Electives. There's other towns have to agree. Um, so we have a proposal right now. You guys closed the hearing for it, so it's kind of like it right. is what it is. Um, to adopt the state's definitions mm -hmm. in 94G of marijuana and hemp. So we'll take hemp um, derived products and have out of the definition of marijuana. So marijuana will follow the same regulations that we have. CBD, um, there's hemp-derived products that are approved, and then there's hemp-derived products that aren't approved. Um, and then there's different types of sales transactions that can happen. The one type of sales transaction that is allowed to happen in town is the retail to end consumer of of certain hemp derived approved products. So in zoning, we'll have two definitions and we'll have in, you know, the same enforcement, the same regulations for marijuana and just sort of no real regulations for hemp. So a store could open and then products that are not approved to be sold there would fall under the Board of Health to regulate. So that's if town meeting agrees to 
go with adopting the state's definitions. If they don't, then we're, we have what we have, and we prohibit everything. And that's at this point in time, given the way the state's coming down, it's not bad. I feel like the thinking will evolve. So. That's TBD in a nutshell. <laughs> now, we haven't voted on anything for the change in language that I'm aware of, correct? Are we still waiting on the town attorney, or is it closed and we're done? No, you closed the hearing. You voted to recommend it to town meeting. Okay. Um, so that's why it's kind of like, it's too late. Okay. To do anything different. Right. Yeah. But I don't think we necessarily need to do anything. The town council agrees, but I can't really speak for them right now. Okay, minutes. We got through the ones from January. Okay. Did you have comments on that text? That one comment is on page one, five eighty-seven. You see the source. One, two, third paragraph. Mr. Spina, the end. Should say. Sign design should include a band at the bottom of the awning, right? They were proposing one. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. so that, 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 that's the awning. That's, that's all I have. Where is it? Where are we? Here. Page on, one. Page one. Oh, page one. Yeah. <coughs> oh. Oh. This should just be changed to select voting. So I had uh, one. All those. Yeah. I had one comment in page on page five, um, which is in relation to the um, discussion on footnote one. A, a number of different places in here. Um, it's referenced about um, construct uh, constructing a two-family dwelling. Um, I'm looking at one place that said, Mr. Safina asked whether removing footnote one will take away the right to construct a two-family dwelling. Ms. Mercer uh, replied in the affirmative because two-family dwellings are not allowed in single-family districts without the benefit of footnote one. I think, it, I think that construct, I don't know, I, I'm going to say I doubt that construct was the actual word that was used mm -hmm. because that doesn't fit in the, yeah. you wouldn't have said the affirmative. <clears throat> I think probably the word create or something like that. Or the, well, so the rate of, conver of conversion. I'm, but, uh, but I think another. Yeah, but in that instance there I was asking Right. If without this footnote you could build a two family dwelling, <coughs> you want to change to build. It was basically forget forget that the footnote lets you take up one family and convert. Can you build two family homes? Can yeah. you build two family homes? Two I family think. dwellings in these areas. So if the footnote's no longer there, then um, you can't. That's what the footnote was in that. Where else did you say construct? But and in the bottom it in the these areas you can't anyways, right? That's what I'm saying. That's right. what we're getting at right here. Without the benefit of the footnote, you can't construct a two-family dwelling. There's no by right. <clears throat> you can't construct a two-family dwelling in those areas by right. But you can't even. Can, I guess where I was at, what the way I was reading this was <clears> that <throat> you were inferring that with footnote one, you can construct a two-family dwelling. You can't build or construct a two-family dwelling. You can create convert, one. You can alter you can the way it's currently one. And that's really yeah. what I wanted. Uh, I, okay. Because so the right to have or the right to. Right. Yeah. Because in the following paragraph, yeah. I think okay. it makes more sense in the less sentence to say convert, not construct. Yeah, it said th to three create. to create. So I don't want to use convert because we're changing the language to convert. The existing I language think is altered. it's to create. We should say create. It's in there three times in those two sentences, in those two paragraphs, and I think. Um, yeah, okay, so you can change it to create in both places. Any 
any other comments on those? No. 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 Yeah. Move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of January 14th, 2019 as amended. Okay. Second. All those approved? Hello? All right. educational plan. <laughs> I was doing homework while I was listening to the teacher. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who are those kids? Is there anything more boring than watching CPDC meetings? You're probably watching the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it off. 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 Turn it Watching at home. I didn't know if there was a way we could put on these electronically or via email. Read the notes, either send it off to you with additions to be voted on, or if we all agree that everything is set, get it approved. No. You have to look at open meeting law. Is it really that big of a deal? We've had some of these since January. <laughs> I know, that's why I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Is the guy's name really Mr. Street, by the way? Yes. <laughs> Why is he not listed in here? Is he listed in a list of people? Oh, sometimes they're not all matching. Okay. We can add He's not, but... Yeah.
Yeah, I, I missed the uh, April 8th. Mm -hmm. So this is a special one. Yeah. Turning into me. We are on uh, April 8th. April 1st. 4-1. It's 4-1 still. Okay. Next copy. Oh, got it. I got changes on that one. Healthy families are not allowed in business A. The provision did not allow them to ex be extended 30 feet back. Uh, so which paragraph are you in? Uh, second paragraph. Second full paragraph. Mm -hmm. Second sentence. Mr. McNichol said multifamilies are not allowed in business A. Are allowed in business A, but the provision does not allow them to be extended. 30 feet. Does not, a 30 foot extension doesn't apply. Right. But it says are not allowed. Yeah, we should change I, it to. I, right. Yeah. It's also like the third, fourth sentence.
we done with April 1st? Yep, I am. Yep, I'm in. Move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of April 1st, 2019. As amended. As amended. Or as amended, okay. We're going to add the page numbers, right? Yeah. Hey, there's a few random okay. things to fix. All those in favor? It should be over there, yeah. So, for the votes, since there were only three voting members, you can't have a five zero zero take for voting. One four one. Second page. Mr. Safina made a motion to close public hearing for the special permit at three thirty-five Main. The motion was second. They're all like that, so it has to be three zero zero. Four zero zero. I was there. Sorry, this is on 4-8. I'm a non-voting member when there are five members. I stand corrected. Right <laughs> the math is if, lousy. If there are... Anybody who's missing, I get to vote. Okay, so then the, those should all be 4 zero, zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't take away my votes, please. <laughs> we give you more rights than the uh, zoning statute does. Yeah. So, and uh, we give the associate member more rights than uh, so that's throughout. That's general Page five has the same. Yeah. Page six the same. Yeah. And does some, if someone is not present, does that count as an abstention? Not present. A vote. No, because okay. abstaining is an action. Not being there is right. But if it's five, if it's if it should be then four zero zero. So it's four to the affirmative. Zero for the negative. Zero for the abstain. And one not present. No, no. not you present. You don't. Never counted. Okay. Which, by the way, means that members not present should also include Rachel. Yes. You've only got right. Dave right. listed. Good. Good catch. You're about the April 8th April 8th. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, Senator justify those. Well, I guess it's the actual format, or do you have to submit these to the court? I submit them to the clerk. Like it's on page three. This isn't... This seems this is the uh, format that she uses. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a little different with the page numbers on the left. Did and she add the page numbers recently? No, it's always been like that. But again, when she sends them to me and it converts, she doesn't use words, so. What does she use? I have no idea, something at home. Mm -hmm. Do we always have page numbers? Oh. Yes, yeah, I always check the page numbers. <laughs> we always have them, but we don't say page one of four. We used to. Yeah. No, the, the meeting notes for 4-1 have no page numbers. Yep, I'm going to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it was approved as amended. Yeah, because of the not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of April 8th, 2019, as amended. Second. All those in favor? Do we have another meeting tomorrow, no, Julie? No, I did not finish okay. this. Okay. Julie, what's the meeting for? So the select board is meeting tomorrow, and on the agenda is a discussion of zoning bylaw amendments. So I'll be giving a little presentation. So we, I um, adver, um, listed you guys in case more of you show up. No pressure. But. <laughs> Please show up. I mean, no pressure. <laughs> I know you guys have you other things to do. You did support or something? No. <laughs> not a bit. I mean, but you are more than welcome to be okay. there. And but some of the select board members are looking for input to anything that they can do to help us do our jobs better. You're welcome to tomorrow. You're here until 7. Um... 
Other news. Other news? He's leaving again? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. The paving of Main Street is scheduled to commence in August. Starting with South Main Street to the railroad tracks, one lane at a time. And for North Main Street, there will be a six-week pilot of the road diet, Earl Street to the North Reading border. That will not happen until um, probably at least, let me think about this, what year is it? Probably no sooner than fall of 2020. From Charles Street. So in front of the oh, in front of the. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Did you see what happened to the speed limit on Haverhill? Did y'all hear about that? Yep. yep. And then it oh, got yeah. and then it went back up. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that was going to happen. I knew it <laughs> because there is a there. No, because because there's a really rigorous process that you have to go through with MassDOT, and and when I read ha what we did, it did not sound like we involved MassDOT in that process um, to the rigor that I know you have to do. So I didn't know about a 1974 document, but it, it's n not an easy task to change speed limits, to reduce speed limits. No. Um, on purpose. Even so, if it's thickly settled, the state, right. state, well, we have, the state doesn't um, want every town having 25 speed. mile an hour speed limits. Yeah. Okay. And so, then they're going to gather yeah, data whatever. on like yep. speed travel right. times, speed traps, and, and be, all that yep. sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Doesn't want it to be arbitrary or anything else. And if the data um, is well, the town is also sign an agreement with. Then when they put the at some point in the past. It's not about that particular street. Of course, look at my camera records. So road that's what gonna be uh like four, I thought it hard to believe mm -hmm. yeah. two single lanes. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. I find it hard to believe that they said it was like intersection. Okay. Charles Street is after the incline, so you have a site. When it comes to the state, um, yeah. well, and also the town yeah. owns from the railroad really tracks to right in front of especially the why did they fire remember? station. So they're not <laughs> doing that much. <laughs> That's our <laughs> what did they remember? We're starting to be on that. So, um, for six weeks, and it um, should so be scheduled when schools in session. Do we know how they measure success? There are two parameters of data that they gather, um, and we can add extra parameters to some degree. Um, they were um, like off-peak travel, no, uh, no, peak period travel times, and then off-peak speeds. Mm -hmm. Those were the two parameters that were mentioned. On how they determined whether it was acceptable to Wait, do or not. So Right. So I think but if there, if if the if the travel times aren't increased by like more than a certain amount, which I'm not sure what that threshold is, then they'd say it's okay. Yeah. Right. Mm. And it's speeds. Less likely to dis to disapprove. Yeah. Well, I, I I don't know, but I think. Yeah. That's that's what I think. Do you? I don't know. Those programs. Is that at our request, or did they come up with that? Um, the road diet, putting yeah. it in. I'm not. Ex we we had a meeting and we talked about it. And Sonam officials, Reading officials, North Reading, lots of people were there. Last night, this was like a year and a half ago almost, and we were really pushing for it. And um, it looked like it wasn't going to happen. And then we got a call last week, and he was put in the bin. So why does Tonyham get in? I mean, they're not doing a road diet to their double divided lane, mm -hmm. South Main Street. Well, I mean, we're, there's. I can't speak there's to certain, what's happening there. There's certain but. parameters that. You, you need to meet to even have it make sense. So the reason why you don't do it on South Main Street is just there's too many, there's not enough distance in between, right? The, there's too many curb cuts. There's too many um, high frequency intersections. You know, Ham, um, Hopkin, yeah, Hopkins, yeah. Uh, the railroad tracks, the so, um, summer. summer. I mean, there's just not enough space there in between all of those things. And then you have the interchange 
I mean, the on ramps, you can't do it near there. So there's like sort of on South Main Street, there's all these things that stack up that yeah. wouldn't be acceptable to do that. Right. And I stone them. But it, that's probably the only concern with backing up. Backing up to them? That seems pretty far fetched. Yeah. The reason I asked was I was wondering if they were really inclined to then go for it. If they were trying to appease us because we kept asking them for it, or whether they were actually inclined to look at it seriously and maybe consider it messed up. Yeah, I'm not really sure how the decision was made. Because <coughs> we had suggested in our meeting a year and a half ago, what about doing a pilot? They, part of their um, sort of overall policy is to look at um, active transportation. Um, and so when communities ask, it's, they're sort of like by policy forced to look at some of those. And, and in this case, because you're putting in, it would include putting in bike lanes, that's, that's really where this all w would come from is that it's now part of their policy. Anytime they do anything, they're supposed to look at how they can encourage active transportation. Well, and we have a complete streets policy. Right. Yeah. Um, which so, I was wondering, like, how they were ignoring. So. The North Reading line is the, what, the one after Franklin, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Franklin has that weird intersection. How do you... So the intersections uh, are not going to change. Okay. Like, um, Think around. And actually, it works well with the four lanes or something. Yeah, like so the well. some of the because it's a center lane turn. Having more lanes. Well, it's that Franklin Street's a center lane turning um, lane, and that would stay just as it is. So you're always but they're traveling right now. Well, you're always traveling through. <coughs> anyone going through is on the right hand. Yeah, you know, the, the pitch is only in Pete. I mean, it's not a, a roadway pinch. I mean, and there's two of them, right? My understanding yeah. is that intersections are gonna, the, they'll go back to having four lanes and a turning lane at some of the big intersections. So, and the Franklin Street's not going to change. Right, because they sort of already did that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. right. But, so that's cool. Interesting. <laughs> Other news? Oh. Um, um, yeah, so you, it sounds like I know Tony mentioned it. Um, there's an appeal of a building inspector denial of a building permit for under footnote one. Um, the specific case that town council said, get rid of this footnote, it's a lawsuit waiting to happen, it has been appealed. And that will be at the zoning board on uh, July 17th. So it should be interesting to see how they, mm -hmm. how they handle it. I mean, what they're really weighing is the building inspector's decision. They're not weighing any of these parameters we're talking about now because the zoning isn't official. Um, but the conversation should be interesting. Yeah. What's going on with the lawsuit at the golf course? I was going to ask about that. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And they haven't started demolition or anything. No, I mean, I imagine they would wait until any lawsuit is over before they take away their existing oh, the building. the other is still pending. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I have a email into town council with that specific question, like, what's happening with that? Um, but I haven't heard anything, so... No. And then building projects around town, no, everything going. Yeah, actually things are going pretty well. Right on Gold Street still. Yeah. Um, we had a pre-construction meeting with them. They said they had a neighborhood meeting not that long ago. I think they're hoping to come in for their building permit in the next couple months. Their demo permit first, <coughs> obviously. Um, what about the uh, over by the bank on uh, Walker's Brook, the private road? You mean, oh, you mean the Lakeview, Lakeview 40B Lakeview project? Oh, yeah. Um, that is, they are, they did some site stabilization, some site mm -hmm. work, and they are putting in a retaining wall, and they 
got foundation permits for the townhouse portion of it. I believe building permits for the wall. Did they get, and they building permits for the retaining yeah. wall, right? Yeah, um, vertical construction hasn't really started beyond that. Though. Okay. So. Uh, one last question. Did um, Weston and Sampson come in for the sign permit? I believe they continued to sometime in August or September with the ZBA because they were doing some history research. Um, I, guess, I thought so. I was at the ZBA meeting by chance when they came in. <laughs> it just happened to be a town hall. <laughs> no, I went to something else. I went to protest something else. <laughs> um, and you know, they made their case that the, the realtor basically told them they could have all these signs, and then that realtor sold the building. And so they came in with all these sign requests, and it's like, I can't have any of this. Oh, well, that would be so, so Which which that? Was Weston and Samson on the task building. Oh, I didn't know about that. But they can put a sign not on the front of the building, on the side of the building. Right, so they sort of, I think, did they, with, no, they, did they withdraw? Yeah, they withdrew without, they without prejudice. Yes, yeah. they could figure out yes. where they might want the sign before they... Yeah. Or is that the even a bunch of options? I think they continued. Yeah. Um, no, they continued. Yeah, they continued to until September. Did you pick up that their yeah. scoreboard has a place for advertising? Did you see that? Bring that up if you have a question. I completely forgot. It just kind of yeah. flipped through my mind. Yeah. They have a picture of the, sport, the scoreboard, yeah. and it says, place ad here. You mean just like Reading Highs? You won't be able to so, see it. So we shouldn't be having this yeah. conversation outside yeah. of the public hearing. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. But bring it up in the public hearing. <clears throat> We haven't gaveled no, down, have we? Yeah. No, but we can't because it's the wood. Okay. That's not, All no. right. Public hearing right. progress. That's an in for signage on that site, so before you get into the discussion. Okay. So, to adjourn? Second. All those in favor? All opposed? <laughs> <laughs>